Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to week two of the all invitational. Well, I guess we'll call this the week two roundup. We're going to cover ourselves today. Smother us. We're going to smother ourselves. In, in, in the alpha group. And then some winner and elimination matches. This is, this is not good music. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. There we go. Good hype. Get excited. All right. So, doing a quick run through, make sure everybody's tracking. And here, group A and week two is going live. Is live. Is live. We are currently live. Starcraft. You want to sit now? I typed that here for a reason, Discord. So, we have ourselves. Um, oh, you know what? Before I do any of this at all, I gotta make sure. Uh, make sure I check all of the the replays. And that things that need a third game get a third game. I don't want to have any spoilers, either for myself or for you. So let's take a quick run through. Matches, some elimination matches. There's Group A. Alright, Group B. Ooh, okay, this is good. Whatever this is, I love it. This is a weird file. So what's everybody doing today while I like do the, the work I should have done? How is how is this a thing? Alright, so I got a group B. Exiled versus Mannix for the winner's match. I'm tracking that. Which means Purge and Tool are the elimination match. Okay. Means the finals match goes there. Y'all need to learn how to sort shit out. All right, Group C. We have a walkover. Uh, we have a weirdly named file. And the elimination match is good for Group C. Group D, winners match. Kids. Elimination match. Alright. We're good. All spoilers have been hidden. It's Sunday night. Warmed up. The seat's cozy. The whiskey's cheap. And it's time for some StarCraft. First up, week two of the all, of the all invitational. We start with Group A. We did not get a chance or an opportunity last week to cast their games. We could have. I didn't know that there was a walkover. And I believe the walkover was Jim, Tony, and Praise. Right? Yeah, so we moved to Pure and Izzy D. Pure and Izzy D. So PVT, we're going to get right into this. Why are, we, why are we slowing down? We're going fast today, guys. We're going smooth. We're getting right into this. And I'd like to thank all of y'all for hanging out. This music's hype, but I'm going to have to turn it down.
there's somebody chopping wood in my sound in the background. There is. And we're going to have to handle that next time. Because, ladies and gentlemen, on blue sight, Ellie, in the top right-hand corner, the light blue Protoss, member of the best clan in North America, all inspiration, it is pure. His opponent, in the bottom left-hand corner, also representing all inspiration, the purple Terran, the monster, the menace, is ED. Now, these two monsters of StarCraft we've met here today to duke it out. They're not here to make friends. They're not here to play calm and casual games. This is the premier tournament for all inspiration. This is where we wear the red, white, and the black. We had a dash of blue as we bruise up our opponents. Got the first probe coming across the map here for some scouting. Much love, Asmodian. Much love, Nano. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. Really, the reason we continue to do this is because everybody shows up. Everybody gets excited for these. For playing, for watching. It's a good way to bring our community together. Had a little bit of probe on... Probe on SCV action there. You're right on time, Pure. This is the first game of Blue Shift. You're a minute and 50 seconds in. You made it just in time. Got a little bit of probe on SCVX. The probe's gonna win that. Gonna do a little bit of light harassment there. Uh, shields are gonna come back for the probe. We're gonna start getting a wall up here on the natural base now. The Terran expanding onto the low ground. Back here in the Protoss base. He's got an expansion. And he's got his, his technology really well pushed back. Now, oftentimes, Protoss like to avoid the high ground here against Terran, right? They don't wanna succumb to tank pressure. But this is actually a pretty farly, uh, pretty good distance on the pylons here. Usually I, I see them kind of in the middle middle of the area right here, just back from the ramp. So they could still be uh, so close to the distance between the ramp and reinforcements. Gives a little bit of a wall if needed. Uh, but Pure deciding to you know, edge back. Uh, keep, keep his technology farther back. A little safer. A little more hidden. Twilight Council are going down now. Much love, Pure. Oh, over here. Reaper getting that probe. That probe coming in again. Being a little cheeky. That probe getting one kill for his efforts. We do have a Sentry Adept as the first couple units out here. Next up is a Stargrove. So a nice, well-rounded opening. We have, you know, force fields for the Reaper. They're actually in position. Great positioning here for pure... Oh, actually, fall... I... I, I Say it again, they missed the Reaper. Jumping up on the ramp, but the Stalker comes out. Gotta get that hit, and that Reaper is not going to survive. Fantastic catch there with that with that stalker, with that positioning. You know, and you know, just a benefit of it coming out in the gateway. We talk about, you know, rally distance, but the rally distance from for the ramp? No, the rally distance from the Reaper jumping up. That's that's good. Alright, so bunker going down here now for for Izzy D. This bunker kind of the minimum defense. Uh, required at the time. They gotta get this down for, for any early sustained push. Now this hallucinated phoenix come over here, getting a full scout, seeing the, you know, the tech lab turning away. You know, probably stem. Two barracks means bio. So maybe a, we'll see a heavier investment in, in you know, the adept line, uh, or you know, whatever, whatever it is that Pierre's answer is to this, you know, this bit of information gathering. This is a really good habit if you're a, you know, if you're a new, relatively new player to the game or just trying to climb that ladder. You know, getting information, seeing what they're doing, getting the habit of scouting that information. Figuring out what to do with it comes next, but just get in the habit of, of knowing what's coming, not being surprised by what's on the other side. You know, get, get used later to reading what these mean. Um, but just a really good scout there. We got a engineering bay in the back. So I'm seeing stem. I'm seeing marauders. I'm seeing marines. We're getting a tech lab here out of the factory and a reactor. I, I love this. This, to me, reads 
in a Marine Marauder medevac tank. And that is a, a good, strong, not only slow pushing and, and ground holding composition, but it's a mobile composition. It's a drop composition. Now, of course, as soon as he pulls like two Vikings out of this and a, and a, and a Cyclone, I'm wrong. There we go. That tank's there queued up. We are a little bit of a supply block right now as uh, extra, extra, extra SCVs being pulled back in. That bunker there uh, got all the money back. Talk about mobile. Right up the front, the Medivac trying to get some damage and actually going to be pushed away by some Stalkers. Um, really excellent position. Those Stalkers rushing forward. That Medivac so close to being dead. He really needs to get that away. That is such a value. Don't, don't turn. And there's a turn. There's a kill. And those Stalkers are uh, going to get that Medivac. So when you're running away, like that, every turn you give, every time you turn, you give the enemy a chance to catch up with you. And at this point, now there's so few Marines uh, available. They were all in that Medivac that... Now, this is a this is a very dangerous position. Not a, not a, not a lot of marauders here. That tank really needs to get sieged into a good position to push these back. There we go. He's going to get right behind that supply depot. He's going to give him a lot of defense here. Um, the extra vision coming forward with these medevacs. Um, and now this observer getting into a good position. More uh, units being rallied there as soon as they can get there. Um, here we go. The stalkers now not wanting to face off on the with the small squad there with the medevac in support. Pure pure pulls back from the line. Uh, that tank's going to try to get a good positioning. Uh, Observer moving forward, but actually blinks on top. Goes right for the tech lab. Stim already already completely uh, done being researched, so that Marauder will get a chance to finish. Uh, that siege tank uh, in position right outside of the range, actually. Uh, stalkers are safe, not getting a single shot up, uh, shot off on them. They're going to come right back around here to the mineral line and get some good damage done. These stalkers blinking so strongly to their advantage here. Marines... Uh, trying to trying to handle this, but not quite in the numbers yet. Here comes a squad that can handle this. Marines and Marauders coming from the left side. Kind of a defensive blink away, uh, but they're just going to find themselves in a corner. Uh, now forcing the recall out of this. Going to save three Stalkers, bringing them back home. Now on the other end, and in response to this bio, we have ourselves some Colossus. We have Stalkers. Let's get a good look at the tech. What, what has Protoss been up to? He's just had a nice gateway explosion, putting down some more pile and staying on top of his, of his supply count. We have one robotics facility. It's pumping out uh, Colossuses at Robotics Bay there, enabling that. There's the scan. The Colossus is not a secret, um, but it is a pretty good answer to what looks to be marching across right now. Three tanks, so three tanks are good, but that missing medevac and that missing medevac full of, full of bio, a little precious right now. Uh, this nice clump, this nice ball here, if it can find good position and keep the Colossus protected, uh, then Izzy's really going to need something else to back this up. Taking a quick look though, Izzy's security, a third base here, getting the command center upgraded now. Uh, shield battery, this third base looking pretty good. Kind of fixing his probes there for a moment. And looks like he wants to secure a fourth base here. The Protoss staying above on the economy. Actually, as this push is starting to do some maneuvering around here, looks like they want to come down from the south side now. It will be spotted. This Adept appears in a very fantastic position. He will catch the movement right about here. And even the army kind of getting this sixth sense of where things are. Uh, actually, sixth sense. He sees it well, with the observer here kind of getting into position. He's going to meet this army out here. Now, I would like to see him meet it by the shield battery. But it looks like he's going to move away from that position. Engage his shields. He's going to crash right into it. Zealot charge. Getting right on the army. The Colossus beams going down. The shields preventing the retreat. The stalker's blinking forward right on top of the tanks. The tanks are gone. There's GG and Pure Tanks game number one. With a very fantastic finish. If you could give me just a moment, this this other game, I, I don't even know why it's in the sound right now. We're going to write to the score screen. We're going to solve this, this other game sound problem. Yep, yep, that's what's going on. End game. Yeah, I do want to end that game. Thank, thank you for chopping wood in the background. <laughs> ah, exciting game number one, though, as we are going to load right into game number two. It takes place on K Kairos Junction. Uh, toss one at TVP. How surprising from Nano Pure. That's a tough call to come back when you move out and that happens. No, absolutely. This <laughs> tech Shazam saying, uh, I would have just died to those stalkers. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a best of three and Pure is taking the first game. Let's get it right into the map. Kairos Junction in the top left hand corner, the light blue Protoss. It is Pure. 
In the bottom right-hand corner, the purple Protoss. It is Izzy D. The purple Terran. It is Izzy D. Did I get that completely backwards? Fine. Uh, there is the shark emote. I love the shark emote, you guys. I need to go out and get me that shark emote. Uh, so a couple things from chat. Pure saying he thought he, he thought Izzy D did did really well. Uh, Pure said Sampu saying he would have just died to those stalkers in that early push to the main base. Um, Pure says it's a tough call to come back when you when you just move out and that happens. Yeah, absolutely. It was a, a fantastic game. Just a great engagement there by Pure right at the end. Uh, you know, Izzy caught a little bit out scouted and a little bit of information deficit. But overall, really good game here. As Pure moves across with that uh, that first probe gateway in production, all uh, back at home. It's gonna come up here. It's gonna see that you know. Hey, look at that! The barracks in the base. The barracks not out in the map. It's right there. Nano in chat says you picked Protoss. Any way you play is a gimmick. Right, Pure has to concede that point. Says, uh, I'm sorry, didn't cross my mind. Nope. Come back over here, taking a look. SCV getting the full scout, sees the natural expansion. Sees, again, the right things were at home. Nothing in the middle of the base. Both these players at least getting a start off with kind of their their standard their standard stretch, right? This is their this is their their intended game as the probe. Ducks in around the corner of third base. We'll come back to him. We'll see if he drops anything funky on that end. Maybe a pylon. Maybe some buildings to go with that pylon. Uh, second barracks here. So it looks like we kind of have a 2-1-1 uh, build here for EZD. Probe still chilling out there in the third base. Keeping an eye on the third base position. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something there before long. Something um, of merit. Uh, Reaper coming in here. Get a few shots off at this Nexus. Let's see how long he stays there. If this is challenged. He's going to come up here. And he's going to meet the Adept. Uh, the Adept. Going to get a good shot. The Reaper actually trying to find a jump off. A, a jump point. And it looks like he's going to find his end. Three shots of the Adept. He's going to clean that up. I like that move from Pure. Kind of moving the moving the Adept here to the bottom. To intercept off a jump. Um, and then picking up that Reaper off the retreat. Kind of looked like he was trying to jump off here. Change his mind. The Reaper... Kind of bugged out and went over to the left. The, adept, the Adept's turn now to get some scouting information. This first bunker going down. A couple Marines are going to be in position. Should push away that Adept. Uh, unless he decides to stay and fight. Uh, but this Adept here. Going to come up to the high ground. The Marines finding themselves in a good position. And there's the Cancel. He's going to see the double barracks. He's going to see a very similar opening. Um, but uh, you know what? He actually didn't go far enough to see that command center. So that is the that is the change up this time around this command center uh, third base really quick really greedy third base here uh, third base off of two barracks the factory just now going down here for Izzy D and let's see if this pays off back home we are getting a, a, a gateway explosion which isn't the kind of payoff you you might want you know three gateways out creates a good devastating army he's he's gonna want to have something on this end to answer to three gateway production and you know, honestly this this number of marines. Uh, you know, Bunker here do a pretty good job, especially with the way he's continuing to push out Marines. Stem has started now. Uh, this Adept is going to come in. Good number of Marines are at home, and as long as they stay at home, not a huge threat. They're going to be a little late on any kind of medevac push. I don't expect to see Marines push in the front door. Uh, I'm going to see, you know, an increased number of Marines, however. Uh, getting right into the upgrade here for the command center. He comes to take a look in. It looks to be Stalker again. It is another Blink Stalker. We're kind of seeing a, a repeat of last game. We're getting in a, uh, as I say, minus, minus the sentries not on the board here. You know, that money you know, put into getting to this point a little faster. Um, pure in chat noticing he did miss the CC. Uh, this attack, if, if this is if this is a good sustained aggression, he's going to be in a pretty good position. You know, that Blink is now finished. He's got to avoid the bunker. He's got to come in at a good angle. Blink, of course, enables that. He can get a shade up to the top, take some high ground. Uh, it does look like he's going to at least see the Marines, and that is not something necessarily the Stalkers want to dive into. Um, he is going to get some high ground vision now. Uh, Stalkers deciding to... Actually, good call there. Not blink up into the army, but come in, find a weak point, poke in. 
Uh, looks like they're going to have to back out, use that blink a little defensively. He sees the CC. He's going to get a couple shots on it, but it's going to turn around. He is delaying the landing. Actually, this Stalker is still alive. Um, still in a great... Not Stalker, this Adept still alive. Still in a great position. Uh, he's going to shade forward, try to get out of there. The, the Stalkers are going to successfully get out of there. Actually, it looks like the Adept going to blink onto the tank. Force the tank to unseage. Actually, give some maneuvering ability here to the Stalkers. As the Stalkers move in, uh, still trying to find a, the best position, but that is a lot of bio. This is not a, a, a sexy place for them. Tries to get a little fancy with the Blink Micro. He's going to have to pull back here. As the Observer moves forward to keep a tab on that army, uh, the Stalkers get away successfully. All right, that Command Center now. Going to try again to get to land. We're now getting more racks here. The reactor's going down on the starport. We should see some medevac production start to kick in. Now, this is these are the Ford Stalkers back home. Of course, he's not been sitting back. There's some sentries. Uh, some more Stalkers being brought in. Another explosion of gateways. Three more on the way here. Uh, Warp Prism going to come back and support the sustained fight. The Stalkers came to, to try to poke in. Looks like they got a an SEV building and actually got out some good poke damage keeps Izzy at home keeps him on defensive um, just in general should be making him uncomfortable there's a little bit of good blink micro Ooh, he's gonna catch the medevac that is a fantastic catch here as kind of a moves the army this way the army forces to go around the top um, but the medevac uh, successfully uh, you know goes straight over things right found himself in a very awkward position uh, these stalkers are going to do a great job of, of catching these. Actually, a tank out here in the open. If he does this right, he gets the tank and doesn't lose much in return. One last shot from the stalker is going to finish that out. And Pure doing fantastic damage here. Uh, looks like he's actually going to poke at the, the other tank. Two siege tanks gone. Now this is just a bunch of marines and marauders in the middle of the map with no other support. Uh, Pure just shredding away and, and skinning off... Um, just getting off the support here. Pure now, this warp prison. Now, that was flying. So, that is either misclick or this warp prison was doing something dangerous while, while we were playing around in the middle of the map here. Uh, but it doesn't look like he's trying to chase away this warp prison. So, I'm not sure if that was the case. Uh, this army now reconvening, getting some medevac support. He's got some more tank. It looks like he's going to try to get this warp prison. Uh, if he can snag this, that'll be a, a, a good hit for sustained for same fight. There's the stem right under it. Uh, there's no chance for that war prison to escape that damage. Marine stem, marine damage is, is quite a lot. Now, that is a cost. Uh, that was a lot of stem marines. That's a lot of medevac energy. You know, we'll see if that comes into play if he starts to get low, if he doesn't get those heals fully, you know, in, in a kind of a sustained, sustained fight. Um, but should not matter. That was a good catch. Uh, absolutely great catch there. Uh, so there's the scan. He sees the arm. He's kind of in position protecting the third. So he's going to come up here on the main ramp. We are getting the Phoenix coming out. He's going to spot the army moving into position. This tank needs to siege up soon to get into a, to, to a good spot. A little far forward. There's the stem. The Colossus kind of stuck out in the open. Warping in some zealots. Try to protect it. They're going to come forward. The Colossus is going to continue to get the sustain damage it needs. The sentry shields are up. Another tank in position, but the first forward tank goes down. There are already zealots on top of the back tank. The Marines trying to stem back here, and the medevacs are are almost entirely alone. There's the GG. Izzy taps out, and it looks like Pure is going to take game number two. All right, ladies and gentlemen. As I blow into the microphone. Let's turn back on that electronic dance music. We do not have a game number three. It does look like Pure will move on out of the group stage. All right. That is Group A. We have caught up with last week. There was a walkover. So we're going to get ourselves into the winner match. Which, after a walkover, is between Pure and Quiet. That's some very hype music. That is some very hype music. GG. Congratulations to Pure. Now we get to watch Pure try to make it out of the group. As he faces down quiet. Game number one. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in this best of three, kicking off on Blue Shift. In the top right-hand corner of the light blue Protoss, we just saw him... In Group A, he's moving on, or attempting to move on, out of the group. It is Pure. His opponent in the bottom left-hand corner here, due to a walkover, 
hoping to slam down in the winner's match and make his way out of the group as well. It is uh, the Orange Terran, Paraze. This is a PvP that turns out to be a PvT. It's the Battle of the Peas. Pure versus Praise. Now, we do have something fishy going on right now. We have taken a note from Maru. It's time to build bases outside of your base. As a couple of SCVs coming over here to the uh, fourth base location. Now, this will get scouted. That probe already moving across the map. Trying to find and, and, and see... Uh, find that opening now praise opting to actually have uh, a lot of minerals in the bank before making his first building and he's going to do them both at the same time both barracks rather than one than the other 95 minerals in the bank in this probe uh, coming up here seeing hey there, there are two supply depots that that should be a barracks so there's something on the map there's a barracks on the map somewhere uh, he should be pretty certain of that uh, after a, a quick look here now if there was a, a barracks hidden in this corner and this was a fake proxy that would be fantastic i think that might be that that's new strats there fake proxy um behind this two pylons uh interesting choice there two pylons in that position uh there's not a forge down he's not following that up with anything he's going to cancel that maybe trying to get a pro pool or sorry an scv pool to delay the minerals but you know that wall is going to go up these these SCV is going to completely block this off. This is the defense now. There's no there's no army over here. But what is over here is four Raxes. It is all Marines, and it does look like they're running to the natural base position. Uh, oh, now queuing up into the main base. As this probe's actually trying to get some harassment done. Uh, but a couple Marines here now. Going to be coming out two at a time. To try to get some damage done now. Prey's a little behind on the mineral spending. Um, he's not supply blocked, but you know, he should be producing. There we go. See, he kicks that off. He's got to really stay on top of that production. Every Marine really matters here, and he's got to do some a good job of microing the damage. He's got to do some stutter stepping. Uh, behind this, we have shield batteries. going to go a long way towards, towards making this a good fight. And this Zealot can be kited near indefinitely. He's really got to get back here. He's got to use... Use the rest of these structures, the stalkers. Got to fight. That Marine first kill, very, it could be very hard. Um, this has got to ramp up, right? You, you can't be losing units so early. And uh, actually, Pure doing a really good job of kind of controlling this situation. You know, he's got shield batteries. Now, he's got actually four shield batteries. And he's producing out of two gateways at a time. Warps on his way. Uh, a third gateway being produced. And you're just going to have this steady stream of four Marines at a time now. As long as the the uh, economy works good but you know one one marine here come to the bottom of the ramp um going to face off not a, not a good fight versus one stalker but now now we're getting a, a good number of marines up oh, okay losing another marine here but uh, a good number of marines here pushing up the bottom of the ramp goes a long way this is a lot of damage uh actually opting for more <laughs> barracks he wants to continue the barracks but she realized he has some extra minerals uh but he, he's not up to a critical number yet and he really wants to find that critical number uh these shield batteries so much energy Four of them here, um, gonna make it very hard after this push. And, uh, he's gonna tap out. Pure is gonna take game number one. All right, we're gonna get right on into game number two here. Pure pushing off, uh, pushing off the uh, that hard marine push. There was uh, Pure says a little bit of a supply block there. You can't. You, you got to start that ramp up, right? When you're producing those marines, you really need to get an overwhelming force really quickly unfortunately for praise he was unable to find that moment losing too many units a little bit at a time uh, one at losing too many units before he really got pushed in there uh, but we are going to go ahead and get into game number two now on automation of the best three pure is taking the first game spawning on the kind of bottom left hand side the light blue protoss we've seen him and not drop a game yet it is pure his opponent the orange turn on the right-hand side, looks like he's starting off cheeky all over again. The Orange Terran, it is praise. So we are getting two more SCVs moving out to the other side of the map. So a couple keys to making this work is you, you can't let that little bit of uh, OCD take over. you got to start that first barracks as soon as you can start that first barracks. Uh, he did wait until he had about 300 minerals, more than 300, so you can start them both at the same time. Uh, he's got to stay on top, on top of that production. He's got to stay on top of the supply. And he can't lose Marines when he does this. And there he goes. He's already building the first one right away. That's a huge improvement. Um, you know, he's got to send that first Marine over to the start disrupting things. He's got to send the second Marine to support. And it's got to be this constant flow of Marines not dying. 
uh, not falling behind. And there's that next 150 minerals area. It's right down there. You know, uh, oh, praise, praise uh, in a much better position this time around. Kind of in the speed and execution here. You're a little farther away. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, that's still third base. That's a, actually a straight line distance. So he'll be in a little bit of a better position this time around. Let's see if it pays off here. We are kind of getting the same Sim City, uh, but the probe now sees. Oh, the SCV pool. This is bad. Um, you don't want to chase down that probe. It's not worth it. It's not worth the, the missing minerals. Um, but I guess it is if your entire plan is to make four Marines and, and push the fight. And he's pulling all, all the SCVs across the map here. We have pulled the boys. Now, this is, this is interesting because they can bring enough to the fight, uh, to change, to change an outcome. There's a, there are enough SCVs being pulled right now. But, you know, will the Marines be in a good position to support it? One Marine, actually, taking a little bit of a bruise here just to start it off. Uh, a couple SCVs to, will support this. will do a good job of blocking the Zealot and keeping him locked in here. Uh, this Marine going to be the, the main damage dealer here. He's going to have to chase that Zealot. He can't let it get into a into a shield battery. Uh, the Zealot protected one Marine here in the fight. Uh, more coming down. Actually, oh, way out of position. If they were just in the middle of this fight, they'd be doing so much more here. Uh, SCV is being pulled in uh, to, to get the pylon, pulling all of them in here to chase this uh, the stalker. Hopefully, trying to get us around, um, but you know, just way too many. A little bit, of, a lot of a lot of mismanagement here. These SCVs should be getting the damage, and the stalker doing a great job, pure moving down the ramp, you know, pulling the the whole of the SCVs away, um, and kind of this A move formation here. Uh, the probes have been pulled. The SCVs start to go down here. The Stalker, the shield battery is doing a lot to actually keep S, uh, probes alive. There, very little probes have fallen. If you look at the count, it was 12. 12 SCVs to zero probes. Uh, shield battery saves the day here. Pure with his excellent hold of, of a very scary and dangerous situation. Pure 2 O's praise. And it looks like he's going to go on outside the winner's match. He's moving on up into the next stage. G G. Uh, it's so much scary with SCVs. You're not wrong. Uh, absolutely not. Um, Praise, if you're watching, you know, hey, fantastic job. There were some execution things you could do to, to work on that and make that a really scary push. So uh, just double check, and there should be no elimination match. That was a walkover. So we're going to get ourselves right into Group B, which is the full group of the night. So last time we watched Tool versus Maddox and Purge versus Exiled, the winner's match... Exiled versus Mannix. So we're going to go ahead and get into game number one, which is Blue Shift. Better than live, ladies and gentlemen. We can get right into these fights. Right to them. GG. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. In the bottom left hand corner. The light blue Protoss. It is exiled. In the top right hand corner, his mirror opponent. The yellow Protoss. It is Manix. Got that awesome drums of war in the background. Now, Manix. Exiled mirror match, mirror mirror placement, mirror match mirror placement. We're getting that wall going right at the front, dropping the gas. I like watching for that first deviation between PVP. It's always so specific. They have an idea. They have a plan. Now we are seeing a double gas coming right out of Exile. and a singular gas out of Manix. Manix here checking for any cannon rushes. The most susceptible to the to counter rushes are those who can do it. Second gateway drop in here for Exiled. The scout coming out of Manix. It's like Manix opting for the second gateway as well. But down one gas. Now this gas here not necessarily being mined out of. Dropping the cybernetics core at a good distance away. Maximizing kind of that sim city. And uh, starting to slowly build up on gas. So interesting choice here with the with a double gas nice and early. It's a good 75 minerals. Moving up on 
moving upstairs, exile, gonna get the full scout, gonna see the cybernetic cords, gonna see really what we're seeing here is everything's at home. Uh, not a lot to, um, not a lot to worry about. Fin you mining out of that second gas now, exiled, pulled the trigger, Mannix popped the second gas. So we're gonna have a little bit more gas here for Mannix. A little bit of warp game. Everybody's just kind of getting into the rhythm, right? So we're going to have a pylon down, ready for the expansion. Once they feel comfortable, though, they're going to expand. Manic, so down here, watching for the natural. Now, I don't... I get a lot of shenanigans blocking natural bases. We're going to find out right now if we get a lot of shenanigans in PvP for base blocking. It does look like he's opting to return a mineral and then go build that base. Actually, already going to start some long-distance mining here as Exod comes back and <laughs> has to push this probe out of here if he really wants to get an expansion done. Taking a good look around, just trying to get an idea. Just trying to get an idea of uh, what these players, where these players want to go. I'm kind of, this looks like a nice, calm build-up. They have a plan. They have an idea, but... Here, no one's pushing around and being cheeky. No one's being cheeky. We have a first pylon on the other side of the map now. Uh, this will give some nice slow warp in, some slow reinforcements to what looks like a push as a couple stalkers and sentries come across the map. Now, at this point in the game, it's not a lot about, you know, the macro. They're, they're going to be in similar positions economically. We're dropping two shield batteries down here. It hasn't been seen. I don't think that's... It hasn't been seen. Uh, it is just on the other side of these rocks. It's invisible. Um, with these shield batteries, this is this is a game of of, of of individual micro of you know who's who's got well at this moment who's got the most units. But that micro right there, the shield blocking that stalker uh, goes a long way. These shield batteries are about to finish up here. Going to actually completely refresh this fight. Uh, both these stalkers going to be at full shields coming right back into this, and it's a it's a three stalker. Uh, versus two stalker scenario. The Phoenix, uh, the Lucinda Phoenix is coming across here. There's more stalkers coming up to, to assist here. And, and the, really, these shield batteries preventing any of this damage from mattering. Uh, and there's actually uh, a pylon under a lot of danger of going down there. That's actually going to depower the robotics facility. That takes out an immortal out of the fight. Uh, and now the threat, the threat's down here. It's, it's down at the bottom. We have a Nexus under danger, uh, under fire, under threat. We have shield batteries trying to go down the top of the ramp, but this doesn't save... This doesn't save this this Nexus. Uh, probe's actually finding the right moment to pull away. Very good pull there from Maddox. Kind of continuing to mine until the Stalker's moved out of position. And it does look like he's going to have to sack this natural. He's, he's rebuilding up here for continued... Uh, to follow... To, to kind of defend against the continued pressure. There's actually a lot of probes in position here trying to fight this. Um, so what we'll go with... Um, what he's going to go with... Looks like he's he's going to focus down this Nexus... Maybe he turns away. Maybe he continues to sustain pressure. I mean, he's got an immortal on the field now. If he can get high ground vision, uh, it will make a, a big difference here. But you know, there's that there's that force field. I actually don't know who put that down. That, that could have been either side, right? Oh, okay, so there's no there's no sentry up here. So that was definitely from Exile. He says, I'm not ready for a fight yet. Let some energy come back. The, the shield batteries are, are, are getting recharged. The sentries are, are getting some energy back. We're getting another sentry added to the fight here. And he's just not going to let his opponent take that base. He's actually going to shave off a stalker for his effort if he gets a good position here. There's the warp prism. There's the high ground vision he needs. Uh, warp prism going to force this fight. And uh, there's the GG. Manix taps out. Next out takes game number one. Let's get this going. Let's get the CDM going. All right. Exiled being the aggressor, pushing the fight. GG. As we get ourselves into game number two on port. Alexander. My nose is getting clogged. I don't know if anybody can tell. Ugh. 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 There we go. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, this best of three, Exiled has taken the first game with the uh, very aggressive four gate ish. Four gate. Um, this time around, spawning in the bottom right-hand corner for Alexander, it is exiled. His opponent on the top left-hand corner in the yellow, the Protoss, Mannix. Oh, 
Oh man, GG's all around. We have a great series of games here for you tonight. And we are in Group B. Locking it down, dropping some gateways. Sending some pro scouts, getting some PvP underway. Happy Martin Luther King Day, everybody. It's a good, it's a good moment to uh, not only get a little bit of vacation from work, but think about the social issues affecting our lives, and you know, continue to stomp out that horrible, horrible thing called racism. I'm no good at like talking about social issues, so if that came across as awkward, that was probably exactly as good as it's gonna get. All right, this probe. Coming around here, getting all the information, seeing the gateway, seeing the second gateway, seeing the cybernetic core, seeing... There's just, you know, hey, Protoss is doing Protoss things, and the important lesson here is there's nothing missing. Alright, Probe is battling it out over here, getting a little bit of Probe shenanigans, and while scouting. More gateways and more cybernetic cores. We have not had a deviation yet, and it's always the first deviation. I love it in PvP, just waiting for that first deviation, waiting for that first interesting moment. Like that! Right there, we got a little bit of a, uh, a block in the natural. Now, this is this is interesting. Now, Exiled drops a pylon, right? That prevents an expansion, uh, which means you have minerals to use, um, assuming that that's going to do anything, right? So he's, he's going to have to answer that pylon. But... You know, will that pylon be knocked down before the natural timing? For the natural timing, really. Uh, is that going to affect? And I'm going to base this off of the dropping of the natural for exile. So if, if exile can't get, doesn't get his natural down um, before this natural, or before the pylon gets taken away, no effect. And we do have some adepts coming across the map here to maybe um, handle that. Now, but I mean, you know, it's always curious to see, you know, we get this pylon, that's a hundred minerals gone. That's a hundred minerals that could be making a, a natural right now for Exiled. And if we lose this pylon, the pylon goes down before he's able to put his own down. You know, what was the, you know, what was the effect you were going for? Because Protoss can hesitate in their, in their economy a little longer than I think a lot of other races can. In fact, it lets him, ooh, that's a heck of a pool. Uh, the probe's getting the surround there. Uh, but, you know, losing quite a few of them. Um, but he, look, he is going to get it. He's going to clean that up. He's going to put them back to work. That's a little bit of missed mining time. That was completely worth it. Uh, and we are just now getting after that pylon. So, you know, kind of talk about where we were earlier. We did get our natural down a little sooner. Uh, it looks like we are getting getting some money and worth out of this, you know, out of this pylon. All right, first couple stalkers coming in. Looks like that warp gate's going to finish up here for Manix. Uh, back on the other side, you know, we're getting we're getting Stargate. We're getting double Stargate opening. This is a double Stargate versus Robo Twilight. So we should see uh, Phoenix is able to control the map for a while now. These Phoenixes are going to get some harassment done, pick up some probes, see, especially when you're getting you know two at a time here. It's going to be uh, a painful thing to deal with. Now we have stalkers. Stalkers can do deal well with them in, in higher numbers if they can find the positioning, but you know, without blink on the on the board, it's it's gonna get you know more difficult and incre increasing difficulty, right? So, uh, especially when we're talking about immortals, you know, not very good at shooting up. They're gonna they're gonna be this this ground <laughs> this ground power. It's very abusive power. As long as the fights in their term, they're they're great. But phoenixes, you know, create the fights, uh, you know, in their own terms. We have more phoenixes, you know, queued up into this formation. So if if Exile does as well. He's got a very abusive force here. If he catches himself out of position, you know, uh, fighting the stalkers, kind of, kind of like we saw Pierre doing with his stalkers. You know, is about positioning and, and blinking properly. You know, we'll see. And we are just now getting the natural. And if he catches his probe, there we go. Delaying that main even more, delaying that natural even more, and getting up here. And looks like he's gonna start being abusive. Get a couple probes, and he gets out of here before the stalkers. You know, get a hold of that. Um, this is just absolutely free damage. This is trading, you know, energy for minerals here. As uh, Exile does a pretty good job. He's cutting it a little close in there. Like he's trying to find uh, a better path out. He's trying to regroup them. But, you know, getting some unnecessary bruising there. 
Um, but these stalkers, right, lacking a little bit of mobility, have to come down the ramp. And it's actually kind of a very tight, close thing. And these, these phoenixes can dive, can absolutely dive right back in. And this pylon, my god, that pylon. It's so ripe for punishment. Um, so much of your technology, you know, resting on a, on a single pylon, he really needs to reinforce that just a little bit. And it does look like the stalkers are going to put some damage and bruising on. The phoenixes kind of need to... There we go. He's going to get him out of there. Uh, Exiled is bullying Maddox's probe, says Purus. Says, Maddox, if you need someone to beat this guy up for you, heart. So, yeah, these phoenixes are paying for themselves. And you, the answer for this, you know, it's, it's blink, it's positioning, but they're still not a natural down. They're still not an economy. It is... You take a look at the uh, minerals. It's 600, around 600, 650 minerals uh, per minute here for Maddox, and 1,500, 1,400 for Exiled. This Exiled is is doing a fantastic job of, of oh, this this immortal could be caught absolutely unaware. That is a very expensive unit, and the shield battery energy is isn't enough to keep it going. Um, it's doing a pretty good job actually. That those shield batteries, one completely drained, one one low, saved this immortal's life. Uh, more stalkers being moved in as, as Maddox is kind of frantically trying to find the best place for his stalkers. And I think, are these on, they're not in, on any kind of patrol, but right as they go to the low ground, right? The, uh, the Phoenix has come back in and they're being abusive here on the other side. Um, Exiled actually has a third base now and we have 13 mining workers, uh, you know, here for Maddox. And, and while that is enough stalkers to handle what's what's being what's what this force is the phoenixes aren't taking a one-on-one -on -one fight oh this 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 immortal out of position again uh gets picked up outside the range of the shield battery gets annihilated he does not have the resources to continue to replace that that is wholly unfortunate here as as exile is just on a streak a brutal streak tempests are on the way are you kidding me there are capital ships in this battle and Mannix has not made a natural base. If there's a villain in this fight, it is it is our man exiled as he comes in again. Uh, feed, uh, the stalkers divided up this time, uh, split, going to push this away. Now behind this, we do have Tempest. We have that third. Where's that third Stargate? Is um, yeah, right here. Two Tempests at a time. Even some queued up. He's got so many, many minerals. He's so safe. He's on this side of the map, and he's 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 patrolling the entire front. He knows where the army is. There's nothing sneaky going on. He sees everything. That pylon is still gross. Uh, diving in on those phoenixes. Uh, good pull there, pulling the really bruised phoenixes back. As he continues this absolutely disgusting harassment. Um, over here, we do have a third base going. He's... You know, the, the primary base starting to mine out. He's pulling some probes. He's, he's got Tempest. And with Phoenix giving you vision, the Tempest have absolutely have no problem getting vision. Uh, and once they start their barrage, it, it should be a quick GG. They're sitting on the other side of the map. They're not getting a lot in. But, uh, oh, no, Stalker's getting in there. It looks like they might shave off something. I don't think there's a Phoenix missing yet. As uh, even this one here, you know, losing a whole bunch of shields hangs on. With 24 health here, right at the end. Um, you know, Mannix you know, trying to stabilize, trying to get some done. He's getting High Templar down. Uh, I don't think I saw Storm, but there we go. The Archons go up a little bit farther, and dishing out some good damage, and some good anti-air. This Observer now coming across the map. He's going to start realizing how far behind he is. When we have, and I don't, what's that? Seven, seven Tempests on the field here. These Phoenixes just diving in. Getting actually falling right into the stalkers, yeah, taking us some really heavy hits. But again, it's it's just there it is right there. There's just zero shields, 24 health left. He's getting out with everything. We have another gateway coming down, another pylon reshoring up the entire um, well, the, well, the entire te technological chain of the Protoss. There, um, Phoenix is coming in, taking a look, having to dive back out. You know, the stalkers are in a great position. Um, but really, Maddox, or Exiled, uh, right here, has has the game-ending punch and has just decided not to use it. He's continuing this harass, but he's got Tempest. He should be bombarding this on the edges. Uh, there's, there's just not enough on the board to handle handle what he's got back home, but he's going to continue to get up Zelt legs, uh, anti-air, or, or plus, one, plus one air weapons. He's going to continue mining on these bases. 
Um, he's dropping some additional gateways. Maybe he wants some zealots on the board. Um, he's gonna he's shaving off stalkers. I mean, that's a good number of phoenixes, and they're they're doing a good job of it. Uh, but really, this is containment. This is absolutely bullying containment right now. Um, two, it's two more tempests on the way. You know, two more having been created. This there was a total of uh, what's that? Twelve, thirteen. Yeah, these are rows of 12 for me, so 13 Tempests on the board. I actually have the Units tab. I could just press that. Uh, 13 Tempests versus 14 Stalker. There, there is a Tempest for every, for almost every Stalker on the board. Um, and now we're we're adding Zealots to the mix here. Protection tab still going. Blink is, is now being brought. So, so Blink being researched. Cannon's being put down. Uh, this Cannon's try. He's, he's just trying to secure himself from the Phoenixes. And this is the other thing the Phoenixes do. They're not just bullying, they're scaring the opponent. So right now, Mannix is back home. He's spending money on cannons that aren't going to help him. Um, you know, he's building technology he can't afford because he needs units. His opponent has been untouched on the other side of the map. And he's, the, the cojones here, as he just starts shooting <laughs> with the Tempest, um, you were just able to with Tempest. We're not even supporting this with Zealots or Phoenix. We are just going to have, we're going to treat these Tempests like Phoenix. Um, he's going to come up here. He's got, there we go. We have the, the pylons uh, are going to go down. The entire technology, all the tech has now been disabled, and we're going to start chomping away at the gateways. Um, Manic says, hmm. I think he's considering the tap out as he gives the, the tongue face, the smiley tongue face. This Phoenix continues to throw down disgusting amounts of damage. Um, and this is this is a part of the army that's going to sit back and he had, does not even need to get involved right now. As they are one-shotting <laughs> one-shotting Archons. Uh, Phoenix is starting to lift up Stalkers. There's a GG. Mannix taps out and exiled. Takes game number two and does take the series. G G. I'm sorry, Mannix. That was gross. Um, we we did get a 2-0 there. It does look like Exile is going to move on um, out of the winner's match. Now, this is Group B, so we do have an eliminations match. So both these players lost their initial match uh, between uh, Tool and Purge. And the winner here gets to go on to the Decider match. Um, but the loser is eliminated. So... Uh, GG Mannix, um, GG Exiled. Uh, that was a it was a good victory. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick break, and I will be absolutely right back in about two minutes, and we'll continue on with this. Until then, listen to this great EDM music.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. And it's time for more StarCraft. I'm excited. I'm pumped. We've seen some fantastic games here. And all inspiration is bringing their best. And now we have Tool versus Purge in the elimination match. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, spawning in the top left-hand corner, the green Protoss. It is Purge. His opponent in the bottom right-hand corner, the blue Zerg. It is Tool. All right, so right off the bat here. Get that first pylon on the low ground because you have to absolutely, as the Protoss, you have to secure the low ground. There's too much possibility for mass ling floods for you not to get down there really quickly and get that wall in. Now, the Zerg, I'm trying to move in at 17 supply to get this natural. It's going to be denied, and we're going to start this game up back and forth. This tool, try to just make it into... The third, does he, does he try to, to beat the natural? He is going to get pylon blocked. And it's going to force him to make his natural at the third base location. And that's going to upset the rhythm uh, quite a bit here. The base is late. The minerals you know, are delayed. We're getting right into that gas. And that natural rhythm of the player you know, starts to get affected here. And a great move. It, it's so simple for Protoss to do. It costs him 25 minerals. And this is now, this is now a, a huge distance right, between bases. If Protoss does anything fast, anything you know, uh, of great harassing speed coming out. You know, that third base is so exposed. We'll see what we get here. We see, we'll see what happens. What these players decide to do. This first gateway coming down. bit of a, a ling uh, a drone pull here for the third base to get that quick saturation going because the distance between the distance between uh, the bases for, for drones is a little bit farther so we're kind of like ripping off that band-aid we're getting it all done now a little bit of a split there as that first queen's about to come out going right into that cybernetic core really completing that wall getting out the first zealot it's gonna fill the gap here giving out a probe to hold that hold that wall just in case kind of about timing there I don't know if, if there is anything that can get there quick enough with the information that uh, purge had at that time but you know never better safe than sorry so these are things that are always done because of experience right so if there's a probe there and it's unnecessary it's because at one point it wasn't unnecessary and purge ate dirt uh, because of it a ling a uh, quickling he didn't scout a you know, a quick spawning pool, spawning pool first, a 12-12, something. Something got him, and that's that's now his his go-to, like, defense. First Ling coming up here. This Ling, great position for scouting, great position for poking, and now that there's... Oh, now there's a Stalker there. He's, he's, he's not going to get anything done. Now that Stalker moving up here. It looks like he wants to catch exactly this Overlord Scout. He's, he's got a little bit of patrol pattern. He does see it. He's giving it a little bit of room, it looks like, to get in further. He knows it's there. Um, but he doesn't want to push it away, right? Don't want to spook it too quickly. He's going to move up now. How many licks does it take? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Interesting overlord pattern, actually. So 12 shots from a stalker. But the pattern went around here. Right, so this this is the most common path is a straight line. We're trying to get as fast back to this this you know coming from here, 
coming all the way to the back mineral line. But he's kind of going around as if he expected there to be something hiding over here. Uh, with the pylon placement, that could have been a quick adjustment. But I love this. Absolutely. As soon as the Overlord is denied, we send another one in because you don't know what's coming until you know what's coming. And there it is, that Overlord moving his way in. He says, all right, you wanted to get rid of that pretty quickly. Uh, what do you have going on? And this, this explosion of gateways, this is why they exist. He wants us out. Now, we take a look at what's going on. We still have a lot of gas coming out. Um, five gateways is meant to do something. Five gateways is meant to, to be right on the other side of the map with a gateway pylon uh, with constant warp ends. Now, this Overlord does see it. He knows it's here. And there's, doesn't really, it's not going to take a lot to defend this, right? We have five gateways. We have a center that score. A couple of depths. I, you know what? I, I was way too focused on that Overlord. Because right now, we have Ravagers coming across the map. We have Lings trying to make uh, a, a statement. But luckily, we have five gateways. That being said, we are depowering a pylon. If we depower enough of this, the Cybernetic score goes down. Right? It's not, it's not there anymore. It's not available. What are the warp ends? Where are the warp ends? The warp ends are over here. He wants the base trade. He doesn't have enough to base trade this. He's over here. He needs to be over here. I guess it doesn't matter because Zerg has decided to go home. Zerg has decided to go home. Purge here doing a fantastic job of pulling back Tool. Tool being forced now to hunt down the threat. He's got to find it. He, he pulled back from a massive attack. He didn't... He could have taken the Nexus. He could have he could have uh, moved into the main base and, and gotten a lot of probes. Uh, but right now, the worker count is, is in Purge's advantage. And he's, he's, he just misses it. He doesn't know where this attack comes from. He's decided it's time to push again. But, you know, the wall's back. You know, what do you do? Um, well, you start morphing in stalkers. You start putting down things to fight this. Um, now, this Cybernetics Core is going to go down. We really need to get... He, Purge really needs to... To put down some another one, uh, the wall the wall is not going to hold. And now we are. This is the damage he was doing a minute ago. Uh, it is going to continue. It does look like he's trying to catch those probes running the wrong way. Uh, these lings, you know, attacking one at a time in the bottom. A little bit of micro actually collapses him on pretty good here. And they're in a, he's in a very great position here. Now this is becoming a base trade, right? This is enough on this side of the map to to, to destroy. But this is too. Like both of them have. A very destructive army on the other side. Now, this, these two pylons, this wall of gateways, you know, is a lot of potential warp ends that start doing some denying. These these Ravengers, you know, clearing out the bottom is is enough to to, to, to eliminate this. Now, what, what, where are the warp ends? Where do they where do they come? Where do they go? You know, what cycle are they on? Are they going to get it in time? They're going for the pylons. If you're going to go for pylons, you got to go for these two pylons. But the whole warp end cycle here actually stops the Ravengers. Uh, one warp and cycle, one good warp and cycle should stop those Ravagers, but there's only two pylons. There's only two pylons found. This purge needs to be putting down more pylons. Now, back here, this fight's important, but, you know, so much of the economy right now is, is in these, is in these zealots, is in these, these probes, and the whole warp of zealots is gone. He's starting to put down damage now. He's starting to knock out probes. This is this really awkward race, and all of the buildings, actually, all the buildings of Tool are right here. Um... Purge, on the other hand, has buildings in a different spot on the map. There are no more workers on the map. There is, there's minerals to make them, but there's only there's a handful of larvae. What's going on? We, we I mean, we have a base trade, but I, I don't think Tool comes back from this. He has nothing else but these four buildings. No more lings in production. We're, we're getting, we're getting one drone who's trying to make this last. This one drone comes out. He's immediately bopped. Uh, Tool has not rebuilt their base. He's being revealed. Um, these these Ravagers are trying their hardest, but they do not have the DPS to output this. Purge says, if you're going to base trade me, at least do it well. There's the victory. It goes to Purge. G. G. Let's get that hype music going. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get to game number two here between Purge and Tool. Purge taking that game. Um, I didn't. I, not necessarily. He, he couldn't have done. Uh, not that he could not have ended it better, but he ended it. Um, that was very, very well done by both players. We need right, right on, right, right on in the blue shift. G, G.
Ladies and gentlemen, in the top right-hand corner, the green Protoss. It is Purge. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Purge took the first game in a base race. Both armies clashed on the other side of the map. On the bottom right, on the bottom left hand side of the map, the blue Zerg. This one is Tool. All right, we'll see where these players begin to deviate this time around, and it is Forge first. So a lot of options here for Purge. He's got a, a probe on the other side of the map. He can he can block that pylon, right? If he blocks blocks naturally, he can start putting um, cannons there. Instead, he's going to come actually do a complete circle. Looks like he's scouting. Nothing unusual about this probe. Um, and then he has the potential to hide. Now, this overlord is meant to spot the pylons here. Uh, but Purge is should be. And we actually go to the site. Watch watch the site here now. Sightline. So he, nothing's been seen. It, it could have gone anywhere. Um, it's taking a look down here. Let's go back. Did we get it? No. Okay, so he's putting he is putting it down now. He is now putting down the pylon. He took a moment to do it. We're getting a massive pull. Um, so even if this goes nowhere, the drone, the, the, the magnitude of this drone pull, um, it's pretty big. So looking around here, it's still Forge first. He's, he's gateways a little late. We have a lot of drones chasing him. I didn't, I'm not even sure if I'd say he was going to follow that up with anything. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell what his plan was. Um, there were a lot of places he could have hidden, hidden a pylon that would have done more. You know, one cannon goes a long way, tucked away, like, right over here. Uh, but he is going to go home. And it was Forge first. Was Forge first canceled? Did I, did I just see the whole cancel the Forge? Okay. So he cancels the Forge while we were over there looking at the pylon. Um, he decided, he would have had to have decided a while ago that that was not his plan as, uh, as he was maneuvering around that side of the map. A probe now, kind of watching the high ground as he's going to lock down the Zelnaga Tower for a moment. So maybe we'll get ourselves another another pylon built up here, maybe a Stargate. You know, something that can go undetected. Any, anything, anything's possible. This is, this is Protoss. So taking a quick look at the technology. Taking a quick look. Uh, gateway, Cybernex Core, building the wall, getting your economy going, getting a, a pylon kind of out here. I like this as a scouting pylon. Also like it as a pylon for hiding things. It's very easy to when, when overlords, you know, start coming in from the bottom to catch things that are typically hidden back here. You know, maybe they miss something that's tucked away over here. So not bad at all. We got a quick third base here for the for the Zerg. Not even a quick third base, a normal third base for the Zerg. About halfway done now, which means it went down, you know, in the mid 20s. It's so a good timing for a third base. Protoss doesn't have a lot that that can challenge that space in that domain. I'm taking a quick count of everything that's going on. We do have a robotics facility. That is the tech of choice right now. It's a good way to go. Get a get a get some robotics facilities, uh, stargates. It really challenges Zerg, pushing back. First set of Lings now coming across the map. Uh, let's see what they decide to do. Absolute hero zealot there. Medal of Honor winner as he knocks out the majority of those things and holds the line just long enough for a probe to come in, a soccer to be called in and push away that, that little bit of an attack. We do have a pulling of links here though, so maybe a follow up. He has supply block at the moment, that is unfortunate. We do have a pylon down here now in the top left hand corner. Trying to build up a, a small, a small contingent, a small, well-balanced contingent of sentries, a mortal stalker. 
A couple extra gateways being added on now and kind of building up that immortal count. You know, one at a time, we're getting some immortals. They're a very big threat and to the right compositions, but so far we're just getting lings. Oh, oh there's the roach warn. Excuse me. Right now we're getting roaches, so those immortals are going to go a long way for that anti-armor. Uh, back home, a whole bunch of queens on the board now. I like it. Uh, hopefully start getting some good creep spread now. We have just an abundance of queens guarding the third base. Uh, I love the vision. You know, he's got overlords on each of them. The alternating attack paths. He's got the overlord down the middle. He's got a lot of vision. You know, he sees things moving. He's going to see things coming this way. And if they move to the north, he's going to see them moving. If they move to the south, he's going to see them coming. Um, so really, uh, Purge, uh, not Purge, but Tool is doing an excellent job of gathering information. Now behind this, he's building up a very scary number of roaches. Um, this is a huge huge threat here is as he's really focusing on this you know we don't have a, a, a saturated third this roach count is poised for an attack he wants to deal damage with this he wants to do something with it and he knows the attack is coming up the north if he was watching the minimap at all you know he knows this attack is here and even if he didn't he's got at least a couple seconds of creep tumor here as a backup warning now purge is here with the warp prism uh, so this could be a good sustained attack he's got immortals that can do a lot to these roaches, but, you know, he's still dealing with Ravagers, he's dealing with the Ling Wraparound, his Ling's come in, they start diving in, the shields come down, shields are going to prevent a lot of that Wraparound damage, um, but it also traps him in for the Ravagers, the, Rav the Ravager Blast coming in, dealing a lot of damage, but not focus focusing on that War Prism, which allows another round of Stalkers to come in, throwing down the damage here, the shields starting to fade away here, stuttering back as the Immortal's still alive, dishing out massive amounts of damage, there's a recall, you see Purge forcing, being forced to pull back uh, the remainder of that army. As it comes down, the Immortals, actually, the Immortals being saved, absolutely uh, a huge deal here. He needs them to, to stop any counterattack. He needs them uh, to dish out that anti-armor damage. You know, they're not as replaceable, you know, as these Stalkers. These Stalkers, you know, they're on a timer, they're on a warp end, but only one Immortal at a time can be thrown down. And we do have a, a push right up the front here. This wall is being contested. Uh, where they're going for the Sovereign X Core. Looks like they're going to be pushed back. The Immortals and the uh, Stalkers, a little bit of outranging there. Uh, but those Ravagers throwing down a massive amount of damage right on that Sovereign X Core. Uh, you know, if you, if you are purged in this situation, I think you built another Sovereign X Core. That is obviously their target here. But, you know, does what, does does he care? Does he, does he get some Stalkers out now? Does he... Um, is he just focused on the Zealots and the and the Immortals now? I mean, is this is this a big deal? He already he has the Cybernetic Score now already going up at the top. So this wall now, uh, he does not want to contest with the wall. He wants to get in this fight. He's gonna have to move out from those blasts, those Ravager blasts, missing uh, missing all of Purge's army. Uh, Purge, you know, throwing out the damage here with the Stalker, this Immortal combo. Because he kind of has a partial wall here. It's going to prevent any huge surrounds. But again, it also lets him line up for these Ravager shots, taking massive amounts of damage that that. Just moving, moving in and out of it. Ah, there's immortals very low right now. Three immortals on the field. Uh, the, and the roach count, actually, not high. Uh, so the immortals doing a lot of damage, but not getting a lot of bonus armor, as there aren't a lot of roaches to deal with. Uh, zealots are on the menu right now. We're getting thermal lance here, as we're, we're worried about uh, Colossus as soon. Uh, but do we get there? Do we make the game happen that far? This this fight, this tense back and forth fight, the the Zerg here, Tool, on top of things, constantly putting out damage, constantly poking away at this warp gate, trying to take it out and, you know, take out another source of of warp in here from, from Purge. As he's under threat, you know, 500 mils in the bank, he needs to be spending those on, on things that can take the fight, but he just needs time. He needs to buy buy this time for Zealots, for Zealot legs. He's getting shields out. He's chipping away at some of these these Zerglings, not letting them continue to, to build up in these great, greater and greater numbers. I'm surprised we don't have any shield batteries here right now at this time, really to, to help make this a more sustainable fight. We're getting some more Ravagers morphed in here with this, immortal, with this Immortal count on the field. No surprise here that he doesn't want to play the Roach game, but the Ravager game dealing him so much, yeah, actually giving him so much uh, so much damage here, hit and run tactics. Uh, now, that being said, we do still have a lot of Roaches on the field. There go the, the Ravager Biles coming up. He's actually moving right back into it. One Stalker losing his life. Poor fell. There's the shield. Looks like you know, Purge wants to find a fight here, but this blast forcing him back. Great concave there by Tool. He's going to pull back a little bit. Kind of collapses in on himself a little bit at the last moment. And there's Biles doing massive amounts of damage as Purge is just fighting on top of it. There is not enough there. This is so much Roach Ravager is 
continues to pull in. It looks like Tool is it at a minimum going to get this natural base as he forces Purge all the way back to the gate. And we have we have a disruptor. You know, maybe the disruptor with its new pattern does something here. A massive hit. I don't. I'm not even sure if Tool felt that. I'm not even sure if that's enough. If he continues to get that, if he continues to get hits like that, I don't even think that's enough to close out this game. 39 to 158 supply here. Tool is unstoppable wave. There is more moving across the map now than all of than is in all of Purge's army. It is just this ramp. It is just this as the last bastion between him and Victor. He's just got to climb the ramp and 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 close it out. Either that, or he just stands back here and holds out until the end of the game, and he's won. Like, he's, he, he holds him here. You can't make another base. I mean, on this side of the map, we, we had a pylon. There was a plan. He wanted to do something. But right now, this is a threat. This is what's sitting at the front of the base here. Roach, Ravager, Ling, and all he's got to answer it is a small cluster of stalkers. He's trying to get the most massive disruptor shots in the world. He he, he starts getting them. Um, and that's fantastic. But when you're down 30, 30 supply and workers, um, I don't know how many of those shots. I don't think you can out blast wait, wait, I don't know if you can out blast the uh the production rate of Zerg here um with disruptor I mean he's gonna he's gonna have to try as we got more is only disruptors coming out right now for the production tab while well, we have hydras while we have lurkers while we have another base coming down for tool tool in such a commanding position here it looks like we are going to get a game number three Roach is trying to find their position disruptors are definitely off a of cooldown here but they might just be out just they're just out of range of this observer he doesn't know where they're at. This natural base has to be retaken. And it's, it's almost it's almost not worth being retaken. It's such a... You have to. I know you have to, but the minerals are so low here. The disruptors now firing their blast. Going to get some pretty sick... Oh, my God. Oh, man. When the disruptor ball comes back into your own army and shaves away your stalker, that is wholly unfortunate. He actually gets his stalkers out of the way so he doesn't risk that again. Uh, this Nexus under a very huge threat. The Lurker Den almost done. This is a tight spot. This is this is a very tight spot here. The Nexus, the only thing going on right now, and it looks like the Lurkers are going to pull back. These disruptor shots, easy enough to dodge. You know, if you're not if you're not collapsing in, if you're paying attention, that's going to be very hard for Purge to find the right kind of damage. Uh, there he is with the with the overseer. He's gonna get that observer. Now the vision for purge even more limited. He's hiding. It's just such a scary place to be hiding in this pocket of darkness. You you don't know where the enemy is. You're you're gonna be scouting with um, with these cleansing. What we call these these cleansing blasts from the disruptors. Uh, I'm gonna call them that. I'm pretty sure that's not what they're called. But that is that is about ten lurkers, nine to ten lurkers are being morphed in right now. Um, <laughs> and that's a lot of lurkers being killed. Uh, best time to kill lurkers before they're lurkers. Absolutely, before before uh, they're going to be a threat. But that's still four lurkers. Uh, disruptors can pull into that. They they can shoot their blasts, you know, into the bird lurker without risk of, of losing it. Uh, you know, but can they don't want to dive into it. That's something you want to do without detection. Oh, and even with detection, it's a scary, scary prospect. There are so many lurkers. You almost a move the lurkers in and burrow them aggressively. Um, these disruptors really have to start getting some shots off. Um, they land them on top of the lurkers, but you need more than one shot, more than one cleansing nova to, to kill them. There's a GG, and Tool's gonna take this to game number three. G G. See, one of these wasn't going to be a fake game three. All right, first game was Kyrie Junction. Second was Blue Chef. Third game, Port Alexander. G G. Ladies and gentlemen, game number three, tied up 1-1, Purge versus Tool. In the bottom right-hand corner, the green Protoss, it is Purge. In the top left-hand corner, the blue Zerg, it is Tool. Whoo, boy. So after that game, what do we think? What do we think each of these players needs to do? So... With knowledge and information, 
Tool has shown a lot of success. He's been on the other side of the map, get do you know building building intel making decisions based off of intel um purge on the other hand has been cheeky um has found himself ooh ooh not cheeky enough as purge actually lets the hatchery go down which is fortunate for tool he doesn't have to make a base in the third leaving it a little more vulnerable to the opening um so purge has had to use strategy tactics tactics to find holes and openings uh, so both these players in their strongest forms um, kind of clash against each other so you know while tools gathering information is can purge hide what he's doing right what is what is the tactic where's that left hook coming from that sucker punch from the left or the right what what is that what is that angle and i think if tool finds that angle or, or purge doesn't take it tool seems to be in a stronger position um Purge, uh, on the other hand, I'm not saying he's got to do this with tricks. You know, we're basing this off of, off of two games here, um, but he's got to collect information. He's got to play the information game or the hide information game at a minimum. He's got to know what's coming and when it's coming and how he's going to respond. Um, so, but either one of these players, you know, in a prime position to take this match. We've seen a lot of 2-0 so far. This is not one of those matchups. I mean, obviously, it's already a game three, but, you know, these players are, aren't are far apart in skill. Either one of these can move on to the decider match next week. Which, by the way, is what we're, we're doing next week prior to the Pizza Pie. We will be going live at, uh, let's see, Pizza Pie is at 4, so at 2 p.m. Pacific. With the all-invitational decider matches, so those last set of matches in each group. And uh, then we're going to go right into that Pizza Pie. So get your matches in, get your matches played. Um... There is one more, I think there was one more game in Group A that might have been played or might have to be played or, or, or watched next week because they're not due yet. They're not due until later this evening. Um, so we'll, we will see, we shall see how this looks. Take a quick look around here. Zerg powering up, three bases, good timings here. Uh, very, very safe opening. This is what I'm talking about, Bird. Bird just getting on the map. Now, he had this last game. I feel like he had a plan, and we get to see what that plan was this time if there's not a bunch of roaches knocking on his door. Um, this is pie. I expect the pylon to go down there. Um, I love this. See, this is a double information. So, Tool already came in here. He saw what we want to see. He already had a second Overlord ready in case the first one fell. Unfortunately, um, the first one, instead of continuing back behind and hiding back here for second scout, he did turn around. Um, now he is trying to get away. Now this this direction, it takes him away from the stalker. Uh, but I'd, I'd take him up here to this high ground, I'd say. So you know, to the closest place, either a straight line distance to your target. Um, but this overlord is far enough away. He's going to hold information. See even a link coming up here to the front door. Trying to get in, see if there's a hole. See if you can poke. Trying to gather information. This is really Tool's success right here. Now we have, we have three gateways. So whatever whatever's going on here... I, th I think it's a gateway unit. This is another that feels like a stalker zealot push. And it looks like a push that should be coming from a pylon over here. Uh, we saw this all three games. In the first game, it, it heavily paid off. In the second game, it didn't quite it didn't quite find itself in the position. Like, the attacks kind of came at the same time. It wasn't a, a horribly abusive, speedy attack. Uh, but he is gearing up with a lot of pylons now this gateway is going to be caught this was that second overlord we talked about uh so tool should be starting to gear up with a massive number of, of roaches it should be constant roach ravenger production i would even just say constant roach production yeah this time he sees a lot of gateways there's not there's nothing that comes out of this there's only three units that, that can be met out here so we're dealing we are going to be dealing with numbers so there's the pylon. We have the gateway coming down. Now, once the gateway comes down, these are going to be fast pushes. Even pulling stalkers from across the map to join up. But this is a this is a very... I don't even know if all-in attack is the right word. Because we are getting some stalkers being called back at home. This is... A, I, okay. A good defensive stalker area. But uh, walking right under the Overlord. The Overlord knows they're walking in this direction. The Overlord saw six gateways. He knows that that, that totals seven. So some, a Forge coming down. I imagine a Forge is great for Cannon and off the front. 
Now, on the other side, we're getting this constant roach production. So, and I feel like he's ready for whatever this is going to be. Um, he's, he's not stopped making not stop making roaches. And there's a couple, five more on the way, which makes this a pretty good fight. Um, it's going to come down. It's going to come down to the engagement. It's going to come down to that, that first hit. But he is backing up. He's giving ground. Tool's not feeling comfortable right now. ERP is blowing some queens forward. Six more roaches on the way. These six more roaches, you know, it delays the fight a little bit. We're getting some sentries. Some sentries are good. So when, when the micro starts to come down, you know, do the force fields give him the advantage? If he can get the good force fields here, you, know, you give this the purge. If Tool can get a get a good position, uh, get some Ravager Biles on the force fields and, and really take its engagement. This is going to be about the engagement as both these players kind of square up, trying to find a comfort zone. Now, this is supposed to be quick quick and powerful, um, you know, but he's come back for a couple of extra warp ends. He's not comfortable. Purge wants to end this here, and he wants to get it. He wants to do it with a swift strong blow but that's hard to do if you're not not quick and decisive he's he's actually lulled his opponent into making eight drones or eight more drones on the way just as his army comes knocking onto the third base and the queen's moving down here to defend this is not a good place for the queens to be um this is a great place a great ramp though to fight on here for for purchase he's gonna be able to shave off some units here uh, as you do, you don't want to fight up ramps. You don't want to fight down ramps. This is horrible choke, choke, uh, choke points here. The shields go down, continuing to push back some additional ravagers. Some biles coming down. Now you're spending biles. Do you, you spend them on the force fields? Do you spend them on the units? It's hard to tell. These, they're they're not able to be effective. They're going to lose this natural. Now these broodlings coming out here, just as the the force fields. Uh, give way another force field. They're pushing back some ravagers, forcing them to kind of come around, shaving off some more. Another group of stalkers coming in. They're they're going the long way, uh, trying to link up with their brethren. As this is a full retreat for Purge, Purge did a significant amount of damage, uh, but behind that, uh, you know, he needs to he he can't take an ineffective fight if he wants to make this production. Now, on the other hand, Tool, a good job of responding. It's just it's very difficult to work against those force fields. He's got to find the right right angle. Now he wants to use his choke to his advantage. There's not any blink. There's not any. Um, you know, uh, high vision here for this. This is just a large, it's like a seven gate. This is just a seven gate push. We're, we're building plus one. Plus one is actually done. Uh, the only ones with the upgrade are, are the Protoss. So in a very commanding position. So this is numbers versus, uh, you know, upgrades. And, you know, we have spellcasters on both sides. We have sentries. We have ravagers. Um, this is going to be another engagement fight. And, and Purge, you know, being forced to take it up the ramp this time. We don't have any charge on the Zelts. That is some great Biles. They're, they do maximum damage there. Um, that is not what Purge wanted. He gets a couple force fields here as he's trying to take this fight, but the force fields kind of working in, 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 in his disadvantage as well as Tool not opting to collapse in on him. Uh, not a lot of lings there to force that fight, and, and the number of stalkers slowly diminishes here for Purge. He, he did not have the defender's advantage. The reinforcements are very far behind. He's forced to have to take this ramp all over again as he pulls back, and the Ravagers and Roaches give chase, maybe a little bit over but these Biles have been connecting like money all game the purge you know uh, actually leaving some sentries out of the fight here there were some force fields or some damage um you know, missing from that as we get another full round of warp ends of zealots and stalkers using all the gas to pull in the stalkers using the leftover minerals to, to pull in zealots but see the third base already back up and running so tool has been able to hold this defense and get another third base if he can continue to hold this um you know he's going to be in a very commanding position now this Phoenix giving them a little bit of high ground information, giving them about this much, much vision. Uh, the Queen's going to push that away. That is still, you know, uh, oh, Queen's actually walking into and very slowly down that ramp, going to give themselves away to the Zealots. High ground, uh, not necessarily an issue, but this is still a choke point, a place where he, they don't necessarily want to be. He's having a hard time finding a fight, but he doesn't know that that third base is up. We talked about information. We talked about knowing what's going on. That third base is producing. He has been pushing drones behind this. Uh, you know, moving the oversaturated first base, uh, initial base here, you know, moving those drones down. We have Lings coming down, trying to get this around. Now, Tool, on the other hand, could, could easily be pushing Lings around the bottom, um, to get a better surround, but he is actually doing a fantastic job of, of getting those Lings in there. The, the Ravagers, actually, if they can push up this ramp, uh, they could close up this game. This is the game. This is the entire fight right here because he has been continuing to build behind this. He's been continuing to produce behind it. And this is not... Oh, man. The Biles are disgusting. Purge has been taking some 
horrific files this game as the tool continues to close in, continues to throw in so many rapid fire Ravager blasts here. Um, and he, he knows where the income's coming. He's got the perfect concave. There's the GG well played in Tool Cakes game number three and moves on to the decider match. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Woo. Oh, that is group B. We get to move on now. Congratulations to Tool closing that out and moving on. He has a chance now uh, after losing the first round, winning the second. He has a chance in the decider match to exit the group stage. And he will face the uh, loser of the winner's match, uh, Mannix, this week. And we'll show that next week. Oh, yeah, to all those under the snow, you know, stay warm, stay safe, and we wish you the best. We're going to get right into Group C. There is, I'm tracking only one match, so we did White Ninja versus Tuck 4, and Drumhead versus versus Missing No, or Ultralist last week. Um, so that would lead us to winners and winners match and eliminations match this week. So the winners match was a walkover. Um, the elimination match uh, does have a game 1, 2, and 3, and this is, uh, this is a loser's last week. So we get to watch the shenanigans of Ultralisk and White Ninja. This is a, a, another PVZ. So we're going to get right into game number one on Kairos Junction, Ellie. Ladies and gentlemen, spawning on the bottom right-hand corner of Kairos Junction. In the pink, it is White Ninja. On the top left-hand corner, the purple Zerg. It is Missing No, otherwise known as Ultralisk. And... I will accidentally say Sean several times. So Ultra, known for his um, all-in and aggressive strategies. He lives up to the all-in name. Um, it's it's win or it's it's first place or last. It's Ricky Bobby with this man's strategy. Um, we will not see a macro game. I don't predict we'll see a macro game. Now, we will not see a late game. We are going to see some White Ninja shenanigans. Now, the most frustrating thing for Zerg is dealing with this. And this is when you... What do you do, right? You, you have to leave and you have to make it somewhere else. You can't delay a natural any longer than that. The White Ninja... Oh! Oh, so much missed time here. As he tries to fake him out... I'm missing uh, Ultralisk here. Gonna gonna chase him again, um, and he's got to be cussing himself out now because this this natural needs to be made. Um, I mean, behind this, I mean, this could be a fake out to an all in. I don't put it past him. Link flood all in. Uh, he's got a couple links here. He really wants he really wants this natural down the low ground, and he's gonna get it. Uh, he's just gonna get it several minutes late. So we're dealing 17 to 27 supply here. Uh, not due in no large part, no small part to that moment there. About the time I think this is normally up or done, about 10 seconds from now. Um, yeah, the queen's going. Well, okay, wait, the timing's off, so maybe. I think, yeah, definitely done by now. Um, so he's going to have to catch up here in, in workers. He's already significantly behind, and he's making more links behind it. So this has got to be an all-in. This is absolutely has to be an all-in, um, as he is way too far behind in workers to make this a macro game uh, or anything. But as links start to pull up, so he pulls four out to get a scout. So this is that like first bit of information gathering. 
And what he should be doing now is pulling Lings over here, but he's, he's absolutely supply blocked. So he's falling, you know, farther and farther behind here. There's the Baneling nest. Um, so we need Lings. We need absolutely lots of Lings uh, for Sean to get something done. Now, on the other hand, White Ninja here, getting his natural base down, um, getting down a shield battery. This is fair. Even if you didn't scout a thing, um, there are two possibilities here. And when I'm, when I'm cheesed for so long that I'm behind on economy, I do go aggressive. I pop out the army and try to close out the game and catch you unaware. You kind of force you force this all-in strategy. Um, this Phoenix going to just miss or just see those links. Uh, but this shield battery, uh, it's double pylon. We have a Zealot and an Adept in position here to deal with this. So it's gonna it's gonna depend with these Baneling hits, right? How prepared this is. We have a Sentry here in a great position, and every moment that kind of goes by gives White Ninja a, a little more to work with. So he's popping out another Stalker. We should get a Warp Gate. There's a couple of... There's not just a couple. That's a lot of Banelings. That's enough Banelings for a building as it should crush into the Zealot. Uh, the Sentry throws that Force Field down. And it looks like they're going to try to put some damage here on the front of this base. Uh, these Lings getting a significant, down on this, uh, a significant amount of damage done on the Cybernetic Core. It is going to go down. Uh, but they do have Adepts and Stalkers uh, in the way here. Some more Sentries are actually absolutely going to push that away. Um, another shield battery on the way, replacing the cybernetics core, building that wall back up again. And now Sean is, is sitting down uh, 30 to 17 workers as he's deciding to drone up. Um, we call these attacks all ends because if they don't work, you have lost the game. Um, and that was an absolutely devastating bust against the wall here that did not do what he needed it to do. These shield batteries were actually absolutely key. And only that, the army spread out behind the wall. The Sim City here. Uh, going to stop any any frontal attack and has given white ninja a lot of breathing room right now he's he's absolutely he's got to be feeling comfortable nothing there's no follow-up there's not a flood continually trying to push this down um you know this is this is a zerg now super behind trying to macro up now he can do this he needs to get a third base down uh, as soon as he can like nothing else can be produced he needs to get this third base down and he needs to get a fourth base down you get those down, you, you macro up for a couple minutes, and then you can start breathing a little easy because you, you've caught up. He needs to be greedy. Uh, if he's doing anything but macroing for the next couple minutes, um, just risking it all, um, this is something that you know White Ninja can capitalize on. White Ninja will just have the bigger army. He will just have the bigger economy. He will be farther down the tech tree. Um, even then, even then, if he decides to be greedy, it's something that White Ninja can capitalize on. He can push across the map and be aggressive. Um, so we are getting gas, right? We're getting uh, that hatchery. We're morphing into a lair. Um, he's having, to, he's, he's being, he's forcing himself up the tech tree, right? Uh, getting, uh, getting some more. He's, he's, he was supply blocked again for a moment there. Getting some more, <laughs> more overlords at a time here to, to try to compensate for that. Uh, robotics still to go down some more gateways. This is when you know Protoss is starting to feel more comfortable. He's starting to build up that, that immortal count. That immortal count two now, now three sentries. There's enough sentries to just encircle Zerg and and block them in. A very difficult position, uh, you know, for our for our you know Ultralisk over there. That you know, being said, you know, does White Ninja capitalize on the time he has? These these twelve lings. There he 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 wants to do something with twelve links. Um, he's throwing down a hydralis den. You know, Ultra's feeling vulnerable enough that he's he's interrupting this macro cycle um, to go half and half into some army. Uh, and maybe it's that absolutely called for because at the moment we have a push out. Now we we talked about tool and information. If you take a look now. There is there are no as I move quickly across. Look down here. There's no overlord coverage. It's just a couple of links. Some main links now being morphed in the middle of the map. He's trying to find, and this is like, Ultralisk or Missingo is trying to find moments where his opponent is unaware. He's trying to, to get the sucker punch. But even this, these units here are valuable for a real fight. He needs them in this engagement. And they're actually coming around the back here, so very fortunate. Uh, as long as they don't get, um, as long as they're seen, not, uh, as long as they go undetected. Um, but again, relying on, on missing information here, uh, Miss, uh, White Ninja getting the information, finding himself you know in the position to handle it, pulling up the sentries, handling those bane links. There's the GG. Ultralist taps out, and the victory goes to White Ninja. Oh man, um, 
yep, when, the, when, when the tricks don't work, you got to be able to follow it up with something consistent. And uh, we're going to get right into game number two to see what changes. Ladies and gentlemen, spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of Blue Shift. In the pink, it is White Ninja. He's up one match. In the top right-hand corner, this best of three on Blue Shift, the purple Zerg, it is Ultralisk. All right. So he's coming right out. Looks like he's, he's sending a, a drone across to get some scouting done, to get some information. Um, or maybe, just maybe, a proxy hatch. Now, he meets that probe in the middle. Now, this probe is going to get across in time to play games at the natural again, right? This this ZVP nightmare for Zerg. Um, and Sean, having none of it this time, pulls five. Now, this is like if if White Ninja just keeps this thing alive. Throws, he throws down a, a pylon. Um, he absolutely is wasting so much mining time here. Um, and there it is. There's the hatchery. If I can't make it in my natural, I'm going to make it on the other side of the map. Um, these drones trying to get some damage done. And there is no no natural still yet for... Well, I guess there's, there's a natural. And it does take five probes to stop this from growing. So as long as there's five probes attacking this, this, this thing will not gain health. It will lose health. Um, this probe over here uh, still being a bit of a nuisance. Uh, but it does look like, you know, Sean's on time. He's, he's going to pull up his... Um... Ooh, not, I don't know if that's enough respect for the hatchery. Um, the hatchery can get a lot of damage on, on the other side of the map. Uh, especially if it's allowed to continue, you get a queen out, you get some injects done. Um, it can be very dangerous. Uh, but there are hatcheries all over the place. There's a hatchery in, all, in, in, in Ultralisks. I got I got like, I'm calling them like three things right now. In, in Missing Nose, in Missing Nose third base, there's a hatchery. There's a hatchery in White Ninja's natural base. Um, he actually gets the cancel. Um, it doesn't look like the drone's gonna try to go home, but he's gonna stop in the gap because that's not a gap in the wall. Um, there was no gap because uh, this adept was covering it, and he's there now. Now at this point, this game is stabilized, right? But let's just take an account. We, we have slowed down. We have absolutely slowed down the natural base of White Ninja, but we have forced a third base for the Zerg way over here at the timing. I'm sorry, we we actually sold the natural base at the timing of a third base. This space is still not taken. There's a probe here that can continue to deny this. Uh, we have a Roach Warren coming up, and if that gets scouted, uh, that's some really good information, but it does look like this Adept is going to opt to take this fight. We're going to pull a couple drones again to, to try to clean this up. Um, drones dropping. Uh, two, we have lost two. He sees the Roach Warren. And this Adept... Is gonna win the fight. He's gonna continue to win the fight against drones. We've lost. He lost. I'll just lose his four drones. Um, the robotic facility going down for White Ninja. Uh, coming from this stalker. We do have a stalker sentry uh, follow up now. So kind of, kind of getting into the rhythm a little later. Um, Roach is now on the field, and it does look like, like straight Roach production. So he's making four more Roaches. He's put seven on the board. Um, he's got 11, so, and this is going to be difficult, so he's got six workers on gas, he's got uh, 11 on minerals. It's going to be a difficult sustain for him, uh, but it is a scary number that's coming across the map. So, to hold this, we do have an immortal, uh, this immortal should come out during the engagement. We have shield batteries on the way, they go a long way in the fight. We're probably going to lose, um, a piece of this wall, especially if we get, yep, yeah, we have ravagers morphed in. Uh, Ravenger's a uh, you know, very big threat here to the Protoss wall. Uh, he's actually just opened it up and, and let him in. Uh, shield battery now throwing down shields on the pylon. Uh, Protoss deciding 
to try to meet him out in the middle, but you know those Biles are going down as he's starting to put down damage on the gateway. Uh, un un it, it, it's not that it's going unpunished. It's, it's, it is time. White Ninja's getting time for this, but you know, uh, Ultra... Sorry, missing now is getting is getting some primary production facilities. It's forcing you know more shield batteries. It's forcing more gateways uh, out of White Ninja. More gateways are coming up down here. Now we have two immortals on the field. This is getting a lot sketchier. And what what is typically a massive all-in with a <laughs> with a lot of uh, with a lot of their forces kind of becomes this uh, kind of a sad push that's that it gets forced back we, a little bit of supply block there road Ravager is expensive it is very supply heavy um, also just trying to, to excuse me missing no just missing no trying to pile up a lot of ravengers on this end that that negates some of the bonus damage here from immortals uh, and it gives them a lot of spell that spell casting ability here with the biles uh, it does hit an immortal take away a couple shields here but they are stuck back at this ramp. They've pushed been pushed back from the wall. Now, typically, when Zerg's beating at your front door, they're beating at your front door. Uh, but what we have now is they're beating at the front steps. Uh, this this should not be effective. This this number of ravagers should not be able to close and do any significant damage to the Protoss. And getting some some bile hits in there. This White Ninja kind of walks into it. Um, he's in a very fantastic position. Uh, the warp prism here now can act as as kind of a miniature blink if he's if he's got the rhythm down. Um, chasing away, chasing away the ravagers, shaving off a few more, getting some shields down to prevent, prevent a full escape. Actually, moving, moving forward, using a forward aggressive blink here with the warp prism. You don't see this. Getting this around with the warp prism. There's the chi chi. Missing no finds the time to tap out, and White Ninja takes game number two. That's the elimination match, which brings uh, Missing No out of the competition and gives White Ninja a chance next week in the decider match, labeled here as the finals match. So get those games played. They'll, he will play against the, uh, the walkover winner of the winner's match, uh, which is either Drumhead or Tech 4. I don't know who who had the walkover at that moment. I'm sure Shazam is right on board to tell you exactly what's going on. But that being said, we have one more group to get into, ladies and gentlemen. It is Group D, and we do have a walkover. So last week, it was Bunny Willis versus Teo. And then it was um, the Sosa versus Frogs. Uh, one of those, I want to say one of those was a walkover. Yeah, the Sosa versus Frogs. Uh, so Bunny versus Teo got played out. So we're in the winner's match, and it is Bunny versus Pasosa. So uh, between these two... Uh, both of them fantastic players. This is some of the highest level play of the night, and it is a great game to close this out on. Uh, the winner here, and th that means that means we should not have on a limit. One second. Got to do some math. Um, yeah, that is not the elimination match. That is the finals match. So the winners the first round was um, Bunny for Series 1, and Pesosa takes a walkover for Series 2. So which means the winners match is Bunny versus Pesosa. Which means the elimination match is between uh, Frogs and Teo. It doesn't look like that happened. Um, so we're, that's a walkover, and that was a walkover in Teo's favor. So the loser of this winner's match will face Teo in the decider match. And we'll get that next week um, when we do the last of this group. Siegfried says, at Shazam poop, it's like negative six Fahrenheit in my city. Ah, man. The Northeast is getting blasted. Stay safe, guys. Let's get right into game number one. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We're on Blue Shift. Welcome. How you doing? Hope you're having a good day. Hope it's full of some fantastic StarCraft. In the bottom left-hand corner, in the red, the Zerg. It is... Pososa. P Sosa. In the top right-hand corner, the Blue Terran. He's having a fantastic day, because he is Bunny Willis. Bunny Willis. Both of these players sporting a happy face. Happy star face. This one. Get real close on here. That's the Zerg happy face. You can tell because it's got teeth. This one up here. I don't know. I want to assume it's Terran happy face because it's a Terran player, but that might be Protoss. Is there a difference? Are there two happy faces? The world may never know. Well, you do know, and you'll tell me in chat. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a spawning pool. We have a hatchery. This is a SEV. This is a barracks. And it's all on the line. Because it is this person's job. It's Bunny Wills' job to destroy all the buildings. Of Pososa. And it is Pososa's job to destroy all the buildings. The Bunny Willis. You know what makes buildings? SCVs. You know what you have to destroy? All the buildings. So you know what's best to do? Kill all the SCVs. Then they can't make buildings. You can't make buildings. You can't win the game. That's how you play StarCraft, guys. That's how you play StarCraft. So what we do have is a very fast third base. From Pisosa. I mean, still, still pool first. Pool, I think that was pool first. Um, gas at the natural pool first. With a third base on 20. Now, that's Protoss timing. When, face, when playing a ZVP, you can do a, a very fast... Oh, excuse me, third base, because it's hard to punish. But Terran, that's not a Terran thing. Like, Terran can punish you this early. Reapers can do a significant amount of damage. Now, the Queen should have been popping out. So, yeah, this was definitely a, uh, a spawning pool first here. That Queen should be good to go. Uh, or that Queen would have been good to go if we didn't have spent the third money on the on the third base. So now we have, we're kind of at, we are, we are going to be harassed by this Reaper. This Zerg is, is at the Reaper's beck and call for a little bit. And actually, Bunny Will is pulling out of this. I don't know if Bunny Wills even recognized it. He doesn't recognize the third because... Okay, that was that was player view for a second. Let's not do that too many times. Uh, Bunny Wills doesn't know there's a third base. He hasn't seen it yet. This is the marker of his vision. And he's going to get pushed away. He could have been pushed away into it, but he, just, he doesn't know that this is coming. And then there's a there's a, a roach worm behind this, right? There's there's gas at the natural. Uh, now there's another gas. Good. Uh, that's, that is roach level of gas. That's going to give him abilities to push across the map with roaches and do do roach things. Um, this this is a this is a, a hellion skin I haven't seen. All right, this hellion's moving across the field. It looks like they're trying to get some damage done. Now they're gonna get in here and hit the hit the hit the drones. Getting some damage on six drones falling to this attack. Um, that is that is a massively uh, massively strong attack here. Not only that, Bunny Willis getting scouting information. He sees the roaches. He knows there's a significant number of them. He ducks the roaches that are marching across the map here. Uh, disgusting. Good hits, though. Absolutely good hits. Um, the roaches, though, are what he has to contend with. There is a tank. There is a bear, a, a bunker on this side of the map here. Tank gets a couple of shots off in a fantastic position here. If he can get some repairs down, there aren't Ravagers currently uh, to punish punish any repairs. Um, pulled the... You know, I don't... He pulled the drones to repair and then pulled them back. The bunker is still pretty, pretty bruised. 
but this was not a this was not a full commitment. Right? We have plus one range on the way over here. Um, we have a Viking landing and getting um, getting two drones for his trouble. Queen's gonna pick that off though. Uh, we are morphing a layer at the bottom. We're getting we're going full gas. So he's maneuvering into he's maneuvering into a macro game, a timing attack. Twelve more drones on the way. So he's really trying to macro up here. This is not a wall. He can he he was gonna break. He was gonna do a little bit of harassment. Uh, Bunny Willis pulled some pulled some workers to do some repairs. Immediately gets them back on. Immediately gets back into that macro. Um, absolutely in a good position. Both these players. Um, Really feeling it now. That being said, we're 50, 65 out of 66. Uh, if I'm catching right, there should have been an overlord uh, just bopped here. Uh, so, so finding himself, you know, needing a whole bunch of overlords right as he's really starting to ramp up his his mineral production. He's fun. Both these players, you know, got to be feeling comfortable. Got to be feeling in their game. And it does look like Group A elimination match is now done. So, uh, following this, we should get we will do that one. So we'll close out all of the all the elimination matches. As these first couple of medevacs, it's like trying to dodge overlords, run right into two of them. Um, see what they can do. Where are they going? Where the, uh oh, you were spotted. Yeah, yeah, you gotta go home at that. You you have you have a perfect number of units just kind of waiting for you. That being said, you ran into a lot of overlords you could have cleaned up. I feel like that's that's the the lesson here. Yeah, you gotta clean those up. Go get some overlords for your trouble. I mean, they're here. They're asking for it. Uh, that being said, taking a quick look. Let's get a good count. Let's get a good count of what's going on over here. What, uh, we have some tanks. We have three tanks, four tanks on the field now. Fifth one almost done. We're building up some bio now. Most of the bio kind of roaming around over here. Uh, hunting down some overlords. They are going to catch this one. Uh, Pesosa moving in to try to get some damage done. If you can focus fire on a on a couple of medevacs. There's the boosters getting out of there just in time. If there was a, any range or speed on this hydralisk, um, that would be a dead medevac. A dead full medevac. Uh, is it barely gets out of there? This is the scan. Things are coming for the front door. Uh, he needs to get those medevacs not only back, but uh, in an in position. In position with the, with the rest of the army. Clearing out some rocks. He really wants to be able to maneuver around here. Tanks unseaging. Trying to get into a better forward position. Um, sieging up in the back. Stemming forward. Uh, picking off a roach for the trouble. Uh, chasing down this army. Having to run right through that pile. He pulls back, regrouping tanks, move forward, trying to find the best position. It does look like Pesosa really wants freedom maneuver right now as he's, he's taking away those rocks. Poor Hydralisk. Um, ooh, not even poor Hydralisk. He's having to fight, uh, having to fight workers for his trouble. Uh, it does look like he got one because I don't see a, a bruised... I don't see one that's bruised at all there, but we do have an SCV pool with this push. This is a very scary Marine Marauder. There are a lot of Marauders in here. Uh, the Marauders coming forward. The tank's in position. Um, behind this, SCV's coming to hopefully repair or uh, uh, join the assault. There's the GG. Pesosa taps out as the bio marches on. Just need a button for my music. I don't, but I have a mouse. All right, game number two, Bunny versus Pesosa. This could be game two of three or game two of two for the winner's match. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the best of three. Bunny Willis takes game number one. In the top right-hand corner of the Red Zerg, it is Pasosa. Pisosa. In the bottom left-hand corner, it is Bunny Willis. Bunny Willis. So, crash and fall here. A base with a large main, very large area. It's got access to drops. It's got access for reapers who want to double hop. It's got access for going around your opponent. It's got a, a natural base with a ramp. A very defensive position. 
It's got a third base with uh, ramps, but there are three of them, multiple access points. It's got another possible third that takes you closer to the opponent with wider access points uh, lacking a ramp. A lot of options here for the Terran. And uh, exact same setup here for the Zerg. Uh, creep spread gets an advantage. When you're here, you get to move it forward, but you're also forward and closer to the enemy. Here, you're a little more disconnected. You have to come up the ramp to defend, but you also can defend from the top of the ramp if you're here. Um, this is a very... I, I, I don't want to say defensive map. Uh, it's it's a very standard map. This is this is the, the map you don't veto, right? There, there's nothing... Like you even have a double hop for the Reaper, right? Um, you even have a little bit of dead space here. Uh, this is, you know, the ideal map for most players. The distance is is pretty far. There's a lot of space in between. There's a lot of maneuvers and, and paths for them to cover. Um, so both players are given a lot of options and freedoms. We are getting a Reaper Fast Expand out of Bunny Willis. He's starting to mule up and drop. That first Reaper's going to come out now. We're going to follow him. See what kind of damage he gets done on the other side of the map as the spawning pool finishes up and the first couple lings should be coming out now. So it does look like uh, Reaper opts to stay home. And then he changes his mind. Reaper moving his way across here as the SV comes back. So we're getting like Scout 1. And followed by Scout 2. Like, what, what do they do once the, the SCV left? The Ling's coming out just as this Reaper finds position. Uh, that bomb not making any connections, but the Reaper hitting up on the high ground. He's got this very abusive hop down and forth. It's very difficult to to get both of those, cover both of those zones as a Zerg. It's, you know, we try and do so many things at once. You really just hope the Queen comes out and solves this problem for you. Um, the Reaper just getting away. He's going to have to get away and regenerate some of that health. As the Zerg, you know, losing a couple lings, that's a larva. It keeps him at home. It prevents some level of information gathering, but you can already see Pisosa lining up uh, the Overlords in key positions. Actually, taking a bit of damage over here from Marine as he tried to come in before. You know, this is a, is, is a position you can cover. You can take high ground there, but as soon as you get anti-air, it's dangerous. But this lets you know when there's a third. You can come on over to the natural the spot, what's happening over there. We are getting a couple Hellions, uh, but it does look like a... Um, yeah, a couple of Hellions. We, we don't know where we're going yet, so we can't call Macrobio, but we are getting some Hellion support. They can get a lot of damage on the other side. Uh, Bunny Wills can abuse... Uh, get some abuse uh, abuse out of them. We're getting a third base. That Reaper's still alive here. He, he's going up in the main base. He would have seen... Well, let's see what he saw. Mm, okay, he would have saw the Roachworn. i got to figure out. There's a way that button plays with... Oh, hello. Apparently there are hotkeys for this thing. Let's pause that music. Um, I was saying words. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a little bit of a gas explosion, we'll call it. We have gateway explosions, we have gas explosions. Um, looks like we're, we're going, we got a tank out, we're popping out two marines at a time, or should be popping out two marines at a time. Cloak Banshee. <laughs> Hey, Bunny Willis, thanks for follow. Thanks for watching. This is a uh, so far so good. You have taken game number one. And we're kind of watching you play this out now. A couple Marines, tanks, uh, Club Banshee is what I was saying at the moment. That you actually, I missed it completely. You got some drones for some trouble. There are suddenly missing drones. Is there, there was not a Banshee on the map I missed, was there? Alright, we'll figure that huge mystery out anyway. Now uh, that first Banshee, or second Banshee, coming across the map now. I do really like Pisos's, uh overlord positioning. This one I might move, but you know maybe he sacrifices this one and still keeps his third base information. He's got the one up here he can dive in when he's ready to collect information. This Banshee comes up here trying to find some damage. Um, it is going to two-shot a drone. This absolutely fantastic helicopter of the sky. Um, another spore crawler going down to push that away. And this queen kind of zoned it out really well. Now there's the cloak. Uh, spore crawler uh, still going to take a little bit to finish here. It looks like he's going to get seven drones for his trouble. That is a massive number. 
Uh, much, much value in that cloak, much value in that Banshee. And there's another Banshee on the way uh, right now. Actually, the Banshee over here now. Cloak is uh, is going to be pushed away. There is a Spore Crawler in position. Uh, he's going to have to fight that in another location, that Spore Crawler. You know, get out of that Spore Crawler's vision. He's going to get some Lings for his trouble. Those are free Lings. They don't shoot up. He's going to have to fly back there. There's too much detection for him to really get a lot of damage over there. The fourth base going down for Pesosa. Pesosa, looking at the worker count, neck and neck. Um, he doesn't have a lot of army, right? We have this constant buildup of tanks. We have a very dangerous army. If it was sitting on, you know, parked in the right position, it could be a game-ending army. Um, and it, it's getting larger, but we did just have a drone, exp we just have a, say, a drone explosion. A lot of drones here being produced now for uh, Pesosa. Ten more on the way. Hey, welcome, Asmodian. Thanks thanks for joining. Thanks for coming back. I appreciate you hanging out, man. I appreciate everybody. Y'all are fantastic. And we have a lot of mutas. Now, mutas um, shoot up and down. Banshees shoot down. So what you don't want to do, this is, this is, this is difficult, is fight this with Banshees. But what you can fight this with is Marines. And all of the Marines are right here. They're not right here. This is where they need to be, but they're over here. All right, let's see if they're actually good. Let's see if they're actually going to do, do enough damage. Um, do enough damage to make this a uh, significantly dangerous push. Um, they are doing free damage right now. There's nothing that's going to contest them. These aren't enough Marines to even get into the fight right now. It does look like Bunny Willis is opting to try to close this out. He's got tanks, Marines, and tanks and Marines on the other side of the map. As long as he protects these tanks, as long as he moves this as, as a unit, uh, there's not a lot that stops this. This is this is becoming a base race. Uh, now, Mutas, Mutas are good. Mutas can close out a base race with the Terran, right? Um, there's there's not a lot that, that protects us over here. I mean, we're, we're getting... We're trying to get a missile turret up as they're, they're trying to, to defend it and repair it. They actually get it up. The SCPs get up this missile turret. They're defending it. They are repairing it. It is putting out damage. I want to watch this. We're going to watch the kills on that missile turret. And we're going to watch this health as we kind of watch the other side of the map. Two kills now. This missile turret's putting in work. And there's, they seem to still be fighting it now. The SCVs went back to repair it. It is gone. The missile turret has fallen. But it, it took out some uh, Mutalists. There are, are Lings on the other side of the map now. Uh, but what we don't have, this base race, all the drones are over here. Right? So they're putting down an, another hatchery. They're trying to do a reset here. Uh, very dangerous position for Bunny Willis. He's got to close out enough of this. But the army of his opponent is on the other side of the map here. It is, it is breaking in. The wall is here. They're, they're repairing, actually trying to repair this turret. Uh, well, they should be repairing this front wall. Uh, the missile turrets, you know, can't defend themselves from lings that have now made it into the main base. Um, Marines are trying to, to do their best here. Uh, it, it, is, it is pure, absolute mayhem now. They, they, the buildings have to fly. They have to deal with the damage of the, of the mutalisks rather than the damage of the lings. Uh, the mutalisks now can fly back over here. They can do the damage they need here because the missile turrets have been taken care of by the links. Back over here, uh, Bunny Willis. Now let's take a quick look. We have a gas up. We have gases up. Gases and spores. The gases are going to be fine, right? The spores are a problem. But this base here, uh, this base over here, it, it does look like Pesosa is in emergency management mode. He's building bases all around. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a, a difficult challenge to close this out. It's 11, it's 11 to 8 workers, uh, but the army... Army seems to be a clear-cut winner. Like, this this army of Buddy Willis, you know, can clean up his own... If he can clean up his own base, if he can reestablish that control, he'll be in a fantastic position to close this out. Um, just the composition he's got right now, um, the, the most difficult thing he's going to have to deal with is is the Mutalist. He's going to be able to clear out the Lings uh, as long as he pushes carefully. Uh, the Mutas trying to find damage. They're going to be able to climb in on a... close in on a tank over here. Uh, which is a significant hit. The buildings can wait for later. Um, the Marines are going to be the answer. We need... <laughs> rather, Bunny Willis needs Marines uh, to fix this. He's got buildings that are still flying in the air. Pesosa, though, has the money. He has the bank. He has over a thousand minerals and a thousand gas. If he can get himself the production going, he'll be in a fantastic position. Uh, he's starting to get... Uh, he's really having to pay attention to his micro here. Um... He does. He cannot collapse all these marines. He's trying to put damage down these buildings. 
Uh, the mining is starting up again for both these players here. Is, is, this is the fight. This is where it's all taking place. We're down to the natural base, and every unit here that Bunny Willis can clean out goes a long way. As the meters and the links dive in, the Marines are going, the tanks are going. Uh, trying to focus fire on the Marines, uh, but all the Mutalists have... have Vanish, Pisosa taps out, and Bunny Willis takes game number two and will be uh, the winner. Ab absolutely the winner. He moves on to the out of the group stages. Bunny Willis in the most hectic and crazy games um, we have seen tonight closes out our view on Group D today. Oh. So with that, I, we still have one more group. We still have to do Group A's um, other match. Uh, I just got the message that it was there, but we're going to take a quick break while I get those files. Please enjoy this electronic dance music. We, we, we'll be right back. Alright. Got those files ready to go. I'm going to do a quick review. Uh, Jim Tony versus Praise was a walkover uh, in series number one in Group A. Uh, Pure versus EZD. Pure took that match. We watched that earlier in the stream. Uh, we went to the winner's match. It was uh, Pure versus Praise. 
Pure versus praise. Um, right? Yeah. Okay. Don't load that match. I'm, I'm, that match is loading now because I clicked it too many times. Um, that's happening. You've seen this match. Uh, <laughs> so what we're getting into now is the elimination match. That is the uh, losers match for Group A. Those who lost their first series. So our first game is uh, going to take place on Cerulean Falls. So it's Jim Tony versus Izzy D, and this is going to be a TBT. So let's let's jump into this. Let's watch. Let's watch these Titans try to make it. Try to stay in. Try to stay in Group A. Ladies and gentlemen, in the bottom left-hand corner of Cerulean Fall, the Purple Terran, it is Izzy D. His opponent on the top right-hand corner of the Orange Terran, it is Jim Tony. Now, both of these players are fighting for their opportunity to attempt to progress out of the group. The winner of this match will face uh, praise for a chance to leave the group. The loser is done. Their time in the All-Invitational has the end, and they can't come back until, until the All-Invitational number 16. This is survival of the fittest. This is, this is a no-man's land for losers. Only one can continue. The other we will feed to the crocodiles. And it is in the most frustrating matchup I've ever had to play. TVT. A lot of this has to do with the early game factors and the early decisions. What comes out of your starport first? Are your buildings being made inside of your own base or are they forward? Do you have two gas? well before the normal two gas time so you can build a really quick factory or do you expand these are the decisions of kings these are the decision of men literally men of space wearing armor and guns we have a reaper reaper fast expand for izzy d and we have a very quick factory for Jim Tony. We have the first Reaper coming out here. Getting getting a, a significant amount of damage done on that SCV uh, would have been a good stall you know, if he had done there, but I'm not sure if that was worth the life of that SCV. Uh, we are getting Jim Tony. See, this is this is that that you know strategy tactic. You haven't been across to the other side. You don't know if something's coming. You don't know if you have to protect against a uh, mass reaper. You, he's actually making, he's forcing out units quickly because he expects a cheese, right? We have to get out two reapers. We have to get out a hellion. We have to defend the front. Like, this is something. And it's safe. It's good because when you're done, these units move well together. Uh, they're going to go across and they're going to get some harassment done. Um, that being, I mean, what do they, what do they, what do they have to face? They have two reapers on this side. Um, there might be a Marine, but we have a Hellion to contend with this. If they could get a Reaper down before that Hellion comes out, you know, they're, they're in the, an advantageous position. Um, now they come up, now, now it's anybody's fight. They're, they're having to fight the low ground, fight the hops. These Reapers really want their health to come back here. Um, this is a micro battle. We have one Marine now for Izzy D. He takes, ooh, a Reaper actually going down, moving down to the bottom before his health fully regenerated. He was, he was absolutely obliterated. Uh, and it looks like, you know, I love it. I love it when the Reapers and the early harass they get away. When they get away from the fight, when they survive, they can still do things. They can still be useful. Um, and we're actually getting a medevac pickup here with two Reapers, a tank, and the uh, Hellion. If they can position themselves, yeah, right here and, and really rely on that tank fire, he's in a very strong position. I like this. Uh, and this is the only area he thinks he's fighting against. 
uh, very dominant once that tank gets sieged. If you can keep the rest of the units away from it and force them to actually come into you because you're, you're pressuring the, the mineral line. And this is why TVT gets frustrating. Because you just have to counter these very early harassments. Um, uh, I like the positioning here. We have Reapers. Um, but really good quick pull here uh, to get the tank. Oh, get the tanks. He gets the tank out of there. He doesn't get the, the Hellion. But the Liberator now pushes that away, pushes the medevac away before it has a, ch has a chance to lose the medevac. He's got to get up there and leave. Um, but getting some damage done. Um, I, don't, I didn't have a count. I didn't see a marker come up. He does have a worker advantage, though. Is he down by six workers? Um, but, you know, hard to tell if that was macro or uh, or a little bit of damage. It, there, it, was, it was not as effective as he wanted it to be. Obviously, we all wanted to get a lot of damage done. Um, but we do have a counter push now. Um, this Reaper Hellion combo. Uh, forcing, actually, forcing these Reapers out. But more importantly, the Reapers are keeping the Hellions, uh, keeping a stronger force from pushing. So they're kind of diverting tactic here. We do have the, the tank on the high ground, does a lot. Um, and as long as they can take care of a Liberator. Ooh. Good good use of the Raven there and that, that, um, well, that stasis ability. Uh, something, is that the Matrix thing? Something, anyway, I'm going to watch these Marines and this tank hold the position. Now they're doing a, uh, Jim Tony's doing a fantastic, a fantastic position of being on the other side of the map and defending his own at the same time. Um, so he was, he was the aggressor. Um, he was, you know, initiating the fight. But what we have here is something interesting. We have double starport with a, with a start with a reactor. So we're not jumping into battle cruiser but we're really going to start ramping up the production of, of what i can only imagine is medevac and um uh viking keep the the air battle if you're gonna if you're gonna have a tank battle uh you really need to control the air and you, you do that by out producing in vikings so the first couple you still need some medevacs still need to heal but we'll, we'll see if he switches to that viking production very shortly um on this side, we are going into full bio. We have tanks in some key positions. It does look like Jim Tony wants to get some maneuvering done with this bio force. Ooh, look at that split as the Marines maneuver across the map for vision. These are 50 minerals worth of vision spread so well across the map. Watch, look at that mini map. It's like a hand extending out. And it, they're on all avenues of approach. So he's going to know, he's going to have some warning about where the army's coming from. And, and I guess unless they were to like do a, a drop and sneak thing like right here. But it does look like Izzy D's decided instead to set up in the middle of the map and just hold a forward position defending, defending his third base. So both these players kind of positioning themselves for intelligence, uh, for power and defense, knowledge. I, I, I like it. Now coming out of this, we're starting to get that Viking medevac production going now. Uh, looks like he's not happy with his medevac counts. So he's going to go back and forth between the two Vikings and medevacs. The siege tank is starting to build up here for Izzy D. So, and this is this is this is Terran, right? They're securing, they're securing the the battlefield. They're pushing out tanks a little bits at a time, trying to find optimal placement, trying to find that optimal defense, you know, that location. And we have a move out here from Jim Tony. So we're going to start seeing. You know how this plays out now a lot of this play can can play out to like who sieged first who gets the first shot um but this location at least from stair to stair, stair is clear this tank does not have vision as far as it can shoot it, it can only see to right about here um now on the hand jim tony's over here with one marine uh he's gonna spot it he's, he's in that location he knows it's gonna wrap around i love this he's even gonna see this this wrap around here if he decides to but um obviously he's got high ground vision got the stasis there on the on the tanks, keeping them from, from using their abilities. There's a GG, and Jim Tony takes game number one. All right, we'll go right into game number two. This best of three between Jim Tony and Izzy D. Next one is on Port Alexander. Get right into that, right into that TBT. Come on, buttons, buttons. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Going for Doug Jenner in the bottom right hand corner of the Purple Terran. It is Izzy D. His opponent in the top left hand corner. In the orange, it is Jim Tony. These behemoths of the All Invitational. These Terran monsters playing the absolutely most frustrating matchup. It is TVT. I swear, my favorite part of of Terran used to be the um, dropping sieged tanks. I still love it. I wish it was a thing still. Uh, dropping siege tanks was was a lot of fun, at least as a Terran. Um, but it was never fun to play against, and I guess maybe that's why they took it away. That makes sense to me. But with Terran, th there's so much positional positional based you know position position positional based engagements position has a lot to do with each fight uh the items and the hard counters between the early game units and the the, the numbers of them the damage that you know that one siege tank can do if it's dropped in the right position to deal damage it's massive and it's this tiny games of, of chess and decision making that really makes a good tvt those opening moves that we're about to see the first deviation that we saw last game, right? If we look at the production tab, we have two barracks on the way. The Reaper, factory. Uh, another one's just a Reaper. So we are getting that like, you know, ex you know fast expansion out of, um, potentially out of Izzy D here. There it is there. The command center goes down to the natural base. Um, well, as Jim Tony favors Fast Factory, right? He wants he wants a quick tank. He's gonna get out there and he's gonna use that tank. And if you're not ready for it, if you if you're not out of if you're out of position to deal with that tank, if you don't have the units to deal with the tank, you're done. You just lose the game. Especially because everything is precious in the early game. Every supply depot, every building, every unit is precious, especially when you only have four or five of them. Tank is, is in a, can put itself in a position to destroy those critical early game structures, uh, and that it can be very difficult to punish if you put it in the right places. You know that that's what I'm talking about when we talk about positional in the critical stages of the game. Terran has such a strong capacity to deal critical damage to other Terran, um, especially in positions like this. Like you need to protect, you need to wall off, but a tank in a good position with high ground vision destroys your, your wall. But you have to, you have to wall off. You can't leave an open wall against the Terran because then they can walk up. It's it's that kind of fantastic positioning that made me quit Terran. <laughs> Absolutely made me quit Terran. Um, and we're, we're seeing it here now, right? We're seeing these early decisions. It's you, you make one unit out of a building and then you change, you change the add-on because you only need that one building to get that positional advantage, right? You you get your, your Hellion and then you lift off. You get a couple Reapers, you lift off and trade with the factory, whatever it is you need to do, because you have things you have to deal with. And right now, Jim Tony is producing Hellion Reaper. He has three Hellions and, and two Hellions and three Reapers. Uh, and now it's just a mismatch. The first grenades have gone out. You know, the Reapers have taken just, uh, Un, un, uh, some massive amounts of damage. If Jim Tony gets in there and takes that Reaper, take those Reapers out before he has a chance to, to, to heal, now we have three Reapers and a Hellion that are just going to go uncontested. Um, near uncontested for, for a very long time. Uh, oddly enough, they are going to fire at the Orbital Command, uh, which has a lot of health um, before getting back over here, letting the Reaper heal up a bit. Now we have two Marines. He has two Marines to deal with. Two Marines and a Hellion. And now we're kind of in this, this back and forth tug of war. It does look like Jim Tony's going to get out of there with what he can. Those Reapers are... While well, those Reapers are full health, you still have to deal with the, the Hellions. Uh, Reapers in these numbers in this stage of the game very useful. But yeah, this Defender's Advantage, the, these units are going to come out. All right. It does look like things are starting to stabilize. As Modian says, I despise TVT. Just straight up not fun. Hey, I understand it. I absolutely understand that opinion. Um, it does look like Izzy is going to secure this location. He's got his Liberator out on the field now, too. So Liberator sieged up in the right place goes all, will go a long way. Will absolutely go a long way to securing a defense. Uh, 
But we are taking a look at what's being produced. We're getting Marines. We're getting... Uh, we're starting to get the medevacs. Uh, more Marines. He's definitely diving heavy into bio. Tank support in bio goes... It's a very strong feature. Uh, Cyclone, Raven, Marine, Tank on this end. It uh, looks like we're going to have these Titans meet in the middle. Uh, going to pa almost pass each other up. Uh, this Hellion getting a little farther ahead. That's why the Reaper Hellion is such a good combo. They move together. Uh, he's going to see this Medevac pushing out. We have, we do have this push out now. The first one to siege up goes a long way. I think, is, is he in? Oh, this tank is in rage. In range of the Liberator. Uh, absolutely unfortunate for Jim Tony. He, he wants to get that siege up. Um, but yeah, oftentimes first one to siege up, right? When you're, when you're meeting in the middle, you hold the first one to hold that position. Uh, we'll take it. First volley of a tank. But now we're getting a defensive position. And back home, uh, Izzy D is having to deal with <laughs> that, that Hellion Reaper combo that we were looking at earlier. They kind of snuck in the back door. Um, this medevac taking a peek on the high ground. Um... Double Raven, though. Double Raven with a little bit of energy. Uh, maybe trying to get something done? We do get a Cyclone lock on a Marine. I think he missed. Um, oh, Cyclone lock on the Liberator right after the... The, the, disable, the disabling shot from the Raven. Uh, Vikings now give them high ground. Uh, pushing away the medevac, disabling the tank. Cyclone comes in there, gets the lock on. This, this is this is Terran spellcasters, ladies and gentlemen. This is Terran played by a Protoss. Uh, absolutely fantastic combinations there between the Cyclone and the Raven. I have not seen that before at this level of play. Jim Tony is a master of his craft as he secures this position, pushes back all of that with just about two units at a time. Interference Matrix? That sounds right, right? Interfer inter interference Matrix? Anyway, uh, there is a push, and we're, he's doing it again as he secures the third base. Ooh, not a push. Okay, so, uh, excuse me. He's securing the third base. He's moving his SCVs. I thought we were moving across the map with those SCVs. Uh, but he's securing it with fantastic positions all around from his tanks. They kind of cover each other. They cover the angles. Uh, especially right here, this is not a direction that is really pushable anymore. We do see a huge push over here from Izzy D. He's this. This could end. Uh, this is this is a ball of fire one way or the other. This is a lot of this is a lot of force. Like, does he pick up and and move up? It, it does look like if he can secure the low ground, get a tank siege down here, uh, get a tank in position behind the mineral line. Uh, he gets a siege up. It's a very hard position to cover from. We talked about the sieging. But we still have this Raven combo we might see again. The Interference Matrix coming back over here. Um, as he's doing a lot of damage to the Supply Depots. Jim Tony um, really working at the Supply. Gets the interfer mat Interference Matrix down. Uh, Cyclone gets the lock on. The uh, Marines continuing to push up this way. Uh, getting all the Supply Depots. Supply blocking him for over uh, 1920 Supply there. Um, but it is going to be cleaned up. Kind of a lot of that army committed to that, and I'm surprised there wasn't more down here uh, to kind of surprise from the low ground and in the siege position. Uh, kind of a missed opportunity there for ECD to uh, follow that up with something, um, or even pick him back up and, and try to re-engage. Gets a scan over here, sees the tank, sees the uh, supply depot. He, this, I don't think he has an angle here. Like, I don't think he has... There we go. Getting that shot off. Uh, now, the high, now that the vision has been given to him, tanks can shoot farther than they can see. Um, that is that is unfortunate for that tank. And we have some more army coming to support here. Marines and medevacs. Actually, they're coming here. They're being kind of like funneled around. Unfortunate walking path there. Uh, into this. And this is tough. This is a tough position to, to break. And to break it, he really needs air. He needs to be able to beat this Viking count. It's not a lot of Vikings. Jim Tony does not have a lot of Vikings. But when you have no Vikings, no Vikings beat, or four Vikings beat no Vikings. And this is a, a, a good stem here. He's going to come forward um, as long as he pulls away. There we go. We, we, pull, we force a stem out of his opponent. He takes a few losses. Uh, that He wasn't going to break it. That would have been a bad sacrifice, a sacrificial push. Um, but now the Vikings coming over, giving some vision. How are we doing this? We're getting lock-ons. Um, the Vikings aren't firing, are they? No, they're firing at the medevac. Okay, so the medevacs are cleaned up by the Vikings. 
the uh, anti-armor missile from the Raven uh, gonna hit the tank and that is a huge a massive hit 84 to 167 supply Jim Tony now almost has to just a move as long as he's a move into a tank line he's in a great position easy D needs to start taking notes and getting his tank seats um, you know, into those critical positions. Uh, he knows he's got to know there's an attack coming uh, after losing so much army supply to a well-crafted spellcasting Terran. Uh, we saw and we saw the anti-armor missile, right? We've seen interference matrix. We've seen the cyclone locks in combination with those things, um, you know, bringing out Vikings to take out medevacs. There, there is just, this has just been a masterful, Jim Tony is a masterful combination of Terran tactics here. Um, I feel like Izzy D is just kind of outmatched so far um, in kind of the use of these uh, in the use of these units. Interference Matrix going down on both those tanks. Uh, Raving's being used to incredible, incredible senses, and there it is. Jim Tony takes game number two and takes the series. Moving him on to face off against Praise next week on the Decider match, or the final match of Group A. We are we are musicless, and I, I'd like to close this out on some music, ladies and gentlemen. G G G G G G G G G G G. Honestly, Woo. ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Next week we will be live. It will be at 2 p.m. Pacific. We're gonna do. The decider, the, the final matches for the TAI for the group stage. This will decide the last people to get out of the groups. Um, if we go back to the screen, we'll do a quick review of who is moving on that I know of. I'm not tracking all the walkovers. So right now in the winners match, Pure moves on out of Group A, and we have uh, the finals match will be. Uh, Jim Tony versus uh, Praise. In Group B, uh, we watched as Exiled moved on. And the finals match will be Exiled uh, versus. Wait. I forgot who won that match. Um, God damn it. I just double clicked it too. We're going right back into that. Oh boy. This is pro. This is a pro hour right here, ladies and gentlemen. I guess I could see who won if I sped it up really quick. All right, we just like hit that button a bunch. We're just going to hit that button a bunch. All right. Get out of this. Um, all right. So we're going to that finals match next week. Group C. Um, let's see. Winner's match didn't happen. There was a walkover, which meant uh, so it, was, it was White Ninja and Missing No. We watched. And White Ninja won. He beat Missing No in the elimination match, uh, which means the winner of Tech 4 versus Drumhead moves on, and then White Ninja will face uh, the loser of Tech 4 and Drumhead in the final match, depending on how that walkover went. And we'll watch that next week. And then Group D. Uh, we watched the um, Bunny Willis versus Pisosa in the winners match, and um, Bunny took that one. And then in the elimination match, um, we didn't get to see. So that should be. Um, I believe it was a walkover in Pisosa's favor, and he will move on to the finals match. And that was Pisosa versus Tio. And that's waiting here for us next week. Already, already complete. We'll get a chance to watch that. Uh, and that, that's it. That's what we have next week. We're gonna do all the all the all the decider matches, or what has been labeled the finals match. Um, we will be doing that at 2 p.m. Pacific. That is 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and right after that, we're gonna get into the pizza pie. Fantastic. And let me let me push the pizza pie real quick because last week we raised and and just in codes and donations. We raised $50. $50 went to the winner of the pizza pie. All inspiration gave away $50. And right now, the, the current total for the next tournament is $18.50. If you go to Match Arena, Match Arena, if you go to that link right now and you type in the code uh, pizza pie 2 
Uh, pizza mirrored pizza pie too. It's 50 cents. You are giving, you are taking 50 cents from Matcherino and giving it to the winner of the pizza pie. Um, th if this is Alterations GSL, um, the pizza pie is our outreach community tournament and you, code, let's let's continue every week to maximize our code usage. Here's $15 of codes every single week. If you want to donate, awesome. That would be fantastic. Um, but I just want, every, if everybody here went and put in that code, $3.50 would be added to the tournament. Um, right now, uh, Ralphus said $5, Siegfried $1.50, uh, Cynical Death SC $0.50, cents, Cashem $0.93, 50 cents. Um, and again, this is all Maturino. Uh, Shazam Poo, thank, thank Shazam Poo for his excellent work getting us that sponsorship, getting us that partnership with Maturino that lets us really promote this tournament this is this is a ten dollar tournament out of our pocket um but it's a fifteen dollar tournament a twenty five dollar tournament when combined with match arena stowing at us and any of your donations each week at the end of it of course it is a two hundred and fifty dollar prize pool uh, i'm throwing that forward myself two hundred fifty dollars right into this tournament uh, i think two hundred of it goes to the winner and it's it's down second and third place so if you want to participate um, and you're doing well in the, the all invitational the pizza pie is the place to go you're gonna have to earn those you know pizza pie points kind of like wcs you have to earn your way into the finals um yeah that's what that is that's what we're sitting here facing right now so i know everybody the big question on everybody's mind is what's next and how can i continue to listen to this electronic dance music well the answer is i'm not going to stop streaming uh i'm going to play a video game um, if, if that video game, uh, if you want to have an impact on what that video game is, if you, you want to have a say, come to my discord, we'll hang out. Like anybody we'll hang out. We've done, we've done Starcraft arcade games. We've done, um, Rainbow Six Siege. We've done Magic the Gathering. I have Magic the Gathering tournaments. Um, if you just want to hang out and have a say, come. If nobody shows up, maybe, maybe I play Diablo. Maybe I play World of Warcraft. I, I don't know yet. We're going to find out. Um, one video game, a single video game. I've been playing Diablo 3 with Asmodian, so that's kind of where I'm leaning. Um, but you guys let me know. That's what I do. I'm drop. I'm dropping in there right now. Like, I'm in my Discord. If you don't have a link here, um, because I know that's, that's the only thing holding y'all back is a link. Y'all just, y'all just need a link to, to get in here. There it is. There's the link. It's right there. What are you gonna do? Um, I, I tell everybody, my friends, I, I, I have great friends because they all support my, they all come in here and they, they support my channel, they watch it, they AFK watch it sometimes if they're really cool, no pressure, uh, but they watch a it, video game. as Modian comes and hangs out, um, <laughs> but, 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 and I'll finish the story and we'll get into a game, I have fantastic friends, so my goal now is just to make more friends, that's it. We're going to make more friends because then I get more viewers because my friends watch my stream. <laughs> uh, all Driving right. that number up. I do. Hey, if I make a thousand friends, I got a thousand viewers. What do you want? <laughs> I can make a thousand friends. Um, I got to make one new friend a week. That's all I got to do. Uh, all right. That's a, that's a lot of weeks to get a thousand friends. It, hey, I have the rest of my life. Five years in retirement. Mm, let me stretch out on that one. Ah. Uh, Ah, <sighs> so what I missed? Did you guys? Um... Uh, you missed me tearing my hair out over the stupid fucking Natalia set dungeon. Did you? Did you get your set? I I got this. I already had the set. I just had. There's a dungeon for every set in the game. Okay. And it's like a challenge rift in a way, except the requirements for them are frustrating and aggravating and specifically designed to piss you off and oh. very poorly explained as well but i did i did the natalia's one and i did the shadow and pale one i had to look up guides for both like of them, are you building both of these classes or uh it, it's they're both sets for demon hunter so i was like i don't want to get I, I got a master set dungeon anyway i'll try this natalia's one it looks easy and then like an hour and a half later I finally mastered it 
Well, where am I at? What do I need to do for my set? So the the efficient thing to do. Okay. The efficient thing to do is to build a speed farming set. Okay. And I don't know what Trigulus can do for T13 speed farming. I don't know if Trigulus has any T13 speed builds. What do you mean Trigulus? Well, when you say Trigulus, because you, you, mind you, 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 you are said, the Diablo expert. Your set is named Trags. 